give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever. High spots. Those are not necessary, but listen, stop. Do the high spots with some psychology. When high spots came to me and offered me the opportunity to start interviewing people for a, uh, you know. I wrestled Brody in Japan for an hour, a couple times, I wrestled Brody. I want to have fun, I still have respect for the TNA. The network is here, I'm checking it out, I'm watching all the goodies, it's up, it's running, it's beautiful. Here come the Hardy Brothers! It was me looking myself in the mirror going, you know what? You never know when another shot like this is going to come along. There'll be another woman along in a minute. And it's come to this, and here it is tonight. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another edition of Diva Diaries. I am here with the most infamous diva of all, Missy Hyatt. Hi, oh thank you for having me. Oh my God, <laughs> thank you for joining me. <laughs> I am so excited to talk to you. Um, I want you to know that most of the women that I have interviewed in the past, I have known personally, but we've never met before. Right, yeah. And I am so excited to interview you because you are an innovator. Oh, okay. No, 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 you. <laughs> you are a first for so many things in women's wrestling and not necessarily the wrestling portion but you have been there for the commentary you have been there for the angles you actually started this women's wrestling revolution that's going on right now <laughs> i don't know if you realize I that know. i don't know i don't think you think of that far, okay well you. i'm gonna tell you right okay. now you are you are and I've read your book a couple times because oh, I bought it. Okay. But my last roommate stole it from me. <laughs> so I had to go to highspots.com and get another copy uh, of it. Because when I found out I was gonna interview, I was like, oh my god, I read her book, but I gotta I gotta go get the book again. And <laughs> oh, she stole that shit from me. So I'm gonna have to go get another copy real quick. Um and get my get boned up with my Missy Hyatt. Okay. Because <laughs> Yeah, because the stuff on Wikipedia is not true. And that's the great thing about Wikipedia is I that a lot of those high way of misinformation facts because are facts. Yeah, I mean, I'm like every. I don't understand. Like people can just put anything on the internet and say it's the truth, and but it's not. And I look at it, and it claims that I've been out with certain people or this and that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they don't even have my right date of birth. They don't, what? you know, and they give you your, your real name and all that. But they don't even, they don't even have this. And I'm like, where do they find this? But they take it from the angles mm -hmm. from television mm -hmm. and put it in there. And I'm thinking, but that was, tele you know, that yeah, was. that wasn't real. Yeah, that was the angle. From but me. if you need me, I have a really fresh copy of your book right over oh, here. Okay. I can grab it and we can just reference that okay. really quick if anybody forgets anything. Oh, okay. And we can just reference that if you want me to. I can grab it right now. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I do have notes here, okay. but please feel free to talk at liberty about whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Um, I love the format of Diva Diaries because we talk about women's wrestling and the positive impact um, that the women who came way before me, so I only started wrestling in 2003, uh, but um, the women who came before me who paved the way for women to be so empowered right now, because as we all know, women's wrestling is huge right now. Yeah. Uh, so much going on, but if it hadn't been for the women who 
commentated, who did the cat fighting, who just amazingly cut those promos that prove that women could talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it, that's a, but that's that was old time wrestling. Nowadays wrestling, it's so poorly scripted that even the guys, I mean, you had to talk because, you know, what you did out in the ring or whatever, or like what John did out in the ring, but you still had to back it up and you had to take your character and um, take your character, create your character and make people believe so that mm -hmm. years later, they really believe that and they write on Wikipedia that it's the truth. Right. <laughs> so right. there you go. 30, 40 years before Wikipedia ever existed. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I want I want to backtrack, and I just want to talk about just where you came from, okay. and, and and who you were before ever wrestling was part of your <laughs> okay. life. Hi. Um, you are you're from Tallahassee, Florida, mm -hmm. yeah. which by the way was a hotbed for wrestling. Uh, I mean, not so much. I mean, uh, be honest, I didn't start watching wrestling until I was seventeen, mm -hmm. and it was an accident. Um, I came home, and my dad was uh, flipping the channels, and. I remember he stopped, and it was, I'll never forget, because that's when I was like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. Uh, it was the Freebirds, and it was on Georgia Championship Wrestling mm -hmm. at the time, because if you had cable, you could get Georgia Championship Wrestling, right. and it was like, and it was so cool, because I got to see Tommy Rich today, and people don't realize, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, he was the cat's pajamas. Right. Okay. He was, like, like, uh, Cornette and I talked about this, that, like, in the 70s, the guys weren't that good looking baby face you know they were the older kind of gruff guys you know and and then they finally got into the, you know the good looking baby faces and then you then you had your rock and roll express and your you know bobby rogers and and, and all them but um uh sorry i'm like get, getting off but what my dad was flipping the channels mm -hmm. and it was the free birds and michael hayes was on there and um terry gordy they just did a split something with terry gordy and they had put a baby bonnet on his head and a and a, a pacifier in his mouth mm -hmm. and um he's stumbling all around the ring and he's like and, I, and i'm like oh my god what is this right and it, and i was just like I was amazed at like, what is this? So I ended up, you know, taking her from my dad and sitting down and watching, you know, and then the next thing you know, then you see Tommy, wow, fire rich. I'm like, oh my God. Who and is I that? Yeah. And I remember my, there was a girlfriend of mine from high school that she used to go to the wrestling and she would talk about wrestling. She had wrestling magazines, but I really wasn't into it. So, you know, after I watched that and then I was like, oh my God, you know, get out of the TV guy. I'm going to watch, you know, what is this? I got to watch this. And so it was, it wasn't, but a few weeks later I ended up calling her and I'm um, saying hey I, I, we got to go to wrestling we got to yeah and so but she was into watching because in Tallahassee at the time they would get some of the Florida wrestlers but they also would get um you know it was localized but they would get um from uh Continental. They would get the Fuller's group. They would okay. come over to Tallahassee, and then the Florida guys would come up too. But uh, she was like, "Oh yeah," because she loved Barry Wyndham, and uh, yeah, I was, was yeah, yeah, she loved Barry back then. Even today, and, people oh, yeah. Barry oh, well, I don't know, I know how he did it, but he yeah. had more women. I mean, he was just like seriously. Yeah, Barry Wyndham the women draws just, the girls. Yeah, he really does. He really does. <laughs> I mean, and gorgeous girls too. You know, well, it's not just you know, him. gorgeous girls. Good so. For him. But uh, but no, I was like, no, that's not the wrestling I want to go see. I want to go see the Georgia Championship wrestling. So I made her drive with me to Macon. Okay. And so, you know, we go up to Macon and, um, you know, we uh, got there really early and, you know, and we you know, got our tickets and we're sitting ringside, you know. And, and then I got to meet Tommy Rich and then mm -hmm. I saw Michael Hayes back there and I said, oh, he's the bad guy. Right? You know, and I, you know, I was like, mm. but I, I knew when I started watching it, I was like, oh my God, that's what I want to do. I mean, just the whole silliness and craziness of it. And mm -hmm. I mean, but I knew, like after, you know, getting into it a little bit, I knew I, I and then I saw some ladies that were wrestling at the mm -hmm. time, but I knew I was like, you know, I really don't want to wrestle mm -hmm. because I don't want to break a nail yeah. and just, yeah, yeah, that just doesn't. And back then, you know, they kind of wore these like one piece bathing mm -hmm. suits. It just wasn't sexy to me. <laughs> you feel like it wasn't like a physical It wasn't that, a feminine yeah. sexy kind of thing. And you know, and they you know, they had the hair pull and then they you know and they tried I just I don't know. It wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And so um 
it wasn't until years later that um, I was uh, uh, living with Jake Roberts, mm-hmm. and um, we were up one night, and we were living in Atlanta, and because um, we used to stay up all night, he was the booker at the time, and so we would, you know, talk about ideas and this, that, and the other, and uh, we watched um, World Class Wrestling, and they had, uh, it was Sunshine and uh, Precious yeah. going out in the rain, yeah. and I was like, Jake, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So he ended up calling um, out there and uh, talking to David Manning. And David said, oh, yeah, you know, because I had heard, I guess, from him that either Precious and Jimmy Garvin had left and then they needed someone to get sunshine. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, Baby Doll got that. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't get it. But I was like, okay. But I had sent pictures, you know, um, at least... Which is nice that Jake tried to help me, you know, he tried to help me. So that was good. But then, um, and then, you know, we had broken up and later on, and then I met Johnny. And, um, you know, because um, I was living in Atlanta. I had moved, you know, from Tallahassee to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, so Johnny and I, we were in, um, we lived in Charlotte for a little while, right, in like 84. But then when we moved out to Texas, um, I had heard that, George Scott, they were, they wanted a girl in WWE, mm-hmm. so I, or WWF at the time, so I had sent my pictures up there, mm-hmm. and so we were like in Dallas for about like, we were there the second week or something, and then uh, George Scott called me, and he said, we were looking for a female for Randy Poffo, Randy yeah. Savage, right, and yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I think though that George Scott thought that I was baby doll or something. Because I was in Texas and blonde, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he knew, you know, that yeah. I, I hadn't been really in the business. I didn't really, I hadn't worked in the business. I mean, been behind, you know, you know, learning and everything. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and then, so, I guess Johnny said something to Rick Hazard, and then David Manning, we were in Lawton, Oklahoma, and he's like, okay, you're going to come work for us. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, what do I got to do, mm-hmm. you know? And they're like, okay. And so, like, Fritz, I remember going into Fritz's office, and, um... It was uh, Fritz von Eric and Carrie and um, Kevin and oh God Fritz. I loved him. I and mean, the whole family. They were they were wonderful to me mm-hmm. and paid me wonderful. Mm-hmm. I know poor Jim Cornette told me what he made at um, Texas Stadium and and I made like twenty five hundred dollars for my mud pit match. Which yeah, I thought that you know that was for, in nineteen eighty five. Hello, or eighty six. Yeah. It was that was pretty good. I mean we we did great. Yeah, we world class. I mean honest. We got paid honestly. But um, but yeah, we, we that came mud pit match was a main event match. Well, it had to be like, main event it, because it, no one wanted to wrestle in the ring <laughs> after we got it. Right. <laughs> I mean, you guys. <laughs> I know, but at least I can still say I was main event in Texas Stadium. Yeah, even though and you owned we that. had to be because that, no one girl, wanted. No. Yeah, but no one wanted to wrestle Nobody's afterwards. Nobody away from me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well. But I remember meeting with Vince, I mean, not Vince, I'm sorry, uh, Fritz. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were trying to come up with a name for me. And so I'm coming up with, oh, Constance, or I don't know what I was thinking. And at the time, I loved, um, what's her name? Oh, God, that blonde, she was on um, Falcon's Crest, I think it was. Um, oh, oh, who is that blonde girl? Uh, Falcon's Crest. Because they were rivals with Dallas. Dallas. No, but there was the one. No, um, there was the one that was in, done in the South, and she's a blonde, and she's got the little nose, and um, oh my God, I loved her. I, I thought she was great. I loved her. I kind of built my character between like Susan Lucci of All My Children, and then the Scott Landing. I forget, her, I forget her name now. Dallas. Morgan Fairchild. Oh my God, yeah. Morgan Fairchild is amazing. By yeah, the way. She's she's just, I got to still, meet her though. She like, still is amazing, by yeah, the way. Yeah, but you know, I met her and I and uh, I told her when I met her, I was like, you are the best bad guy in the world. I go, you are better than Joan uh, Joan Collins or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And she's like, well, I don't think Joan would really appreciate that. And Joan I was like, here. And I was just like, she wasn't, I mean, I paid her a really utmost compliment, and she was kind of to me. So after that, I was like, I'm not really a fan of hers anymore. But but I did get to meet her, which was kind of cool. But I tried to do my character, you know, they were trying to come up with my name and what we were going to do. And they were like, you know, uh, precious. They were like subordinate to the guy, but they wanted me to be more like, you know, tell John what to do. Mm-hmm. And what they originally were going to have me be was his mom. Like, I, yeah, I married his father who was a millionaire, and he died on our wedding night. What? 
Yeah, that was, what, that was originally I was supposed to be his mom, and he was going to call me mom, you know, mommy, Deep, and everything. Dark, incestuous. Yeah, stuff. I know, and that kind of crazy. Wow. Yeah, but I married his dad, who was old, uh, and, yeah, and he has a heart attack on our wedding night, and so then I, I have Johnny. Is, and this is before <laughs> Viagra. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but we were, you know, they were kicking around ideas, and so, and uh, come up with names, and I was, I was like, you know, cons, I was like, you know, crazy names, and um, I, I remember getting a book about etiquette, you know, because they wanted me to be like the socialite, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And, um, and it was funny, too, because uh, they never, <laughs> Mark Lawrence would, like, say where I was from, and, you know, one week I'd be in Atlanta, the next week from Augusta, mm -hmm. and then Dallas. Like, I was always from a different place, New York, you know? And I was like, I don't know, I think it was like a joke that they were like, where I was from every week, it was like a different place. But um, Johnny said, he goes like, oh, Missy, da 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 da, da. And then, because I'm, most people call me Melissa. Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, I was Missy growing up, and then when I got in high school, I wanted to be Melissa, because it sounded more grown up. But, uh, and then Johnny was like, oh, Missy, da, da, da. And then Fritz was like, hey, I like Missy. Why don't we just use your name, Missy Hoppit? Because that's my name, okay. my real name. And I was like, oh, okay, we can do that, you know. And, and so we, you know, we did that. So that's kind of how I started. Yeah, how I started. And then and I'll, I'll never forget, like, the, you know, they said, you know, what do I have to do? And, um, and I still have my pay, my pay stub, you know, where I got my $50. I got paid because <laughs> I had to run out there and hit sunshine with a purse. I think, and I fell when I hit her, and I fell. But it was, you know, it was, it is what it is. It, it was is, fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as as a girl who was enamored with wrestling, who actually enjoyed it, like, how did you feel being able to? Let me tell you, jump like, in. I like I've told so many people I got to I got paid to do something. I would have done for free, mm -hmm. you know, and all the years that I worked, it's like, you know, I was getting paid at, at, for doing something that I absolutely loved, mm -hmm. and um, Sunshine was the most wonderful person in the world. I mean, she taught me, I mean, I had a lot, no clues about doing anything, and I remember one time we were rolling around, and I started laughing, and she got, but our hair, you couldn't really see it, but oh, we got back from the from the ring and usually back then that you know the heels would be on one side and baby faces on the other mm -hmm. but she cut don't you ever laugh you know I would get yelled at all the time Ken Mantell they all yell at me about stuff you know but that was back in the day it was like women weren't really in the dressing room so mm -hmm. when I would go in John would put the chair in the corner and I'd face the corner and mm -hmm. I'd sit there and read books because mm -hmm. I'm a history geek so I would read history books and stuff so but you would you know because it just just I don't you know women shouldn't be in the guys dressing room it's mm -hmm. kind of disrespectful mm -hmm. so then they never had girl dressing rooms right. so you would just kind of sit and and look, you know, in the mm -hmm. corner, but, um, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, you know, I got yelled at a few times, and, but, uh, you know, I learned, and she, you know, taught me, and that's, and if you like about interviews, uh, when I started working with Johnny, we had to show up at the interviews because back then they would do interviews like on a Tuesday or something, you'd go to the TV station, and then you would do your promos for like, um, each town, like, you know, Lubbock or Amarillo or El Paso, you would insert the town Into that the you're program. coming to. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you would say, oh, we're going to be in El Paso Saturday night, you know, and da 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 da, -da. Mm -hmm. So it kind of made it more customized. Mm -hmm. Well, Johnny, bless his heart, I love Johnny. And um, and that's one of my biggest regrets in my life is is that I wish John and I would have stayed together because it was so stupid. I was so young and so stupid. And Anyway, but he when he talked, they thought he was sounding drunk because he, blah, 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 you know, Johnny, but that's Johnny, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, he was so underrated as a worker. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen any of his stuff, but uh -huh. his, you know, expressions on his face and just, he was so good. Mm -hmm. And we were, so, you know, and I look back at it now, I'm like, oh my God, we were so good together. I mean, Eddie and I were okay. Eddie didn't need me, and you know. And then with the signers, I really didn't do anything. But with Johnny, I mean, we really had this like thing going. Mm -hmm. You know, he'd get the chair for me. We would do this, and John used to always say, you know, 
He goes, working with you was great. He goes, I could go in there for 10, 15 minutes and not even take a bump. He goes, you know, you know you're a good worker. Yeah. When you can go that, you don't even have, and you got the crowd going crazy and you hadn't even taken a bump. You know I mean? That's, that's a good day. Yeah, that's a real, that's good, a day. real good day. He goes, to get the most you can out of a crowd doing least work, yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, and, and we could just, you know, it, it, just having that control of the fans mm -hmm. and doing that stuff was really, really fun. But, that, um, but yeah, I, so they told me they're kind of like, um, okay, well, Missy, you got to do the promo. 30 seconds, four, four, work, go. And I was just kind of like stuck in front, of, and I was like, okay. And they just whine and complain, and so I, I did it. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I started doing promos. But you have to understand, though, before I got into wrestling, my uh, my roommate, she got one of the first video cameras at the time. You know, the big honkers that they had oh, back in the big, big in the VHS 80s. Yeah, yeah, you know, like this this big, thing, you know, 107 yeah. pounds. And I used to cut promos on it. Really? Yeah, I would cut promos all the time talking about, you know, we're going to be there Saturday night. You know, this is back, that's how they used to do promos, you know, because you would plug like, um, because basically wrestling was an info commercial to get you to buy tickets for the event. Right. You know, like, you know, I, you know, I was raised in wrestling that they didn't give out free tickets to the um, TV tapings, like Tulsa and Dallas, you know, people pay. Mm -hmm. They didn't, you don't get it for free. You know, I mean, you got it on TV for free, right. but that's like an info commercial. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we would, you know, you would plug, you know, the towns and, um, uh, but I would see, you know, the wrestling and how they would, you know, build up the matches and the storylines. And I would create a character, you know, my character mm -hmm. and either I would have a tag team because I knew I wanted to be in wrestling. I didn't want to wrestle, mm -hmm. but I knew I wanted to be in wrestling. And then, you know, then I saw the girls and then I was like, oh, yeah, that's what, you know, I want to be a talk. I want to go out there and talk, talk. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and get that's people mad. That. You know? That's what it's that. Yeah. And I mean, my mom used to hate it. She's like, why can't you be nice? And I'm like, mom, I love being the back. Mm -hmm. I go, I don't want to be nice. I go, you know, I, I, I go to Susan Lucci's mom, tell her to be nice. You know, she's like, but everybody thinks you really like that. I go, mom, everybody knows wrestling's not real. Okay. She goes, yeah, but a lot of people still think you're really like that. And I found that later, like the guys back in the old day, you know, the guys that were like, they said they were the insider guys mm -hmm. for the certain like newsletters and stuff. But then they would um, say to my friend, like Bonnie Blackstone, Joe Pettison, but Missy, she's really like that. And I'm like, oh, I'm the really ditzy, blonde, Ho, mm -hmm. blonde, but you're supposed to be smart at wrestling, and you think I'm really, really like that? Yeah, yeah. So, but I was like, hey, I must be doing something good that they really, really think I'm like. You're that. fooling so, the mark. So, yeah, yeah. you're doing something really yeah. awesome, actually. Yeah. But it was like when when Dark Journey and I, when we would have our fights and stuff, we all the guys would come out of the dressing room to see our stuff because they knew we mm -hmm. weren't wrestlers I mm -hmm. mean and it was a shoot it just was getting about. real out there oh yeah she kicked my ass there. every night the difference <laughs> between working shun sunshine and working dark journey oh, like night and day oh, yeah, like well, literally night yeah, and day well, right yeah it would kind of be like um I don't know uh, oh gosh I think I could compare that to I uh, I can't even. I can't even think. But yeah, day or night. Day, day, day and night. I, I think day, day and night, night is yeah, completely exactly. a great, great exactly. way. Because Sunshine tried to nurture and help mm -hmm. and teach me and everything. And you know, Journey. I even you know, went over to Grizz's house and met her over there, and we would go over. I tried to show her how to you know when you grab the hair and you mm -hmm. do this and roll it, you know. And then you know when when you grab my hair, I'm gonna grab your wrists, and then. I'll go wherever you want mm -hmm. me to go, you know, and I try to, and then, you know, then when you throw me, release my hair, mm -hmm. please. I had bald spots and everything on my really? head because she would just, she'd hear the fans going crazy, like, eh, and she would just go, her face would like glass over and it'd be like, Whoa. and then we would do the same back in the old days. So back in the, oh, back in the olden days. Um, <laughs> We would do like the same matches, just about, you know, you would do TV and mm -hmm. then the next couple of weeks in all the towns you would do about the same match sure. because you, back then we told storylines mm -hmm. and they were, you know, creative storylines and toss and turns and things like that. So, you know, and the TV was mapped out 
building up, you know, because it was it was um, written like a soap opera. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and it progressed, you know, and then you blow this off and do this. Anyway, um, we would do the same finish just about, every, and she would screw it up every night. And I'm like, how can you screw up? I pull, no, what was it? I, I'll, I, can, I can remember because I used to be really good because it, you had to learn back, I mean, when I started, they would come to you um, because you were in different dressing rooms mm -hmm. and you would have a referee mm -hmm. and they would come to you and because you don't, you don't get to talk to, talk to them. Mm -hmm. You're it's not like today's. Yeah, you're rooms. in different rooms, and the referees would come back with the finishes, and they would say, "Okay, this is what you're going to do at the end. Um, you're going to uh, John's going to throw him in the ropes. You're going to grab his foot. She's going to chase you around two two ring posts. You're going to roll in. She's going to roll in after you. Mm -hmm. Grab you. You're going to roll around for a second, and then Johnny's going to pull you apart. And then you guys are going to try to get back at each other, and he's going to take you to the back. That'll set up for the next time." If John loses, she gets five minutes in the ring with me. Gotcha. So everything sets up for the next time. You got it. Right. And um, so, but I tell you, I would pull the leg and she wouldn't chase me. <gasps> or, or I'd pull the leg, I'd roll into the ring and she's not behind me. <laughs> or, I mean, just, it was all just <laughs> forgot. I don't, or just, I don't know. I, I don't know. The trials and tribulations <laughs> of being a female wrestler. Or just being a female in the business. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And at the time, man, let me tell you, I got, I was treated, I was treated really, really good by the guys. Mm -hmm. But I was also, you know, told never to cry in front of the, you know, never cry in front of the guys. There's mm -hmm. a lot of things that, you know, I was told to do. And so many times she beat me up so bad and punched me in the face. I mean, I broke my thumb, broke my nose. All my teeth have been um, veneered because she cracked my teeth. But I would just go outside from the building and go around or go get in the car and just cry and you know and then okay okay I'm fine I'm fine now but you know I would just be so or I'd get screamed at you know by by you know Ken Menta or somebody mm -hmm. you know or, or Watts or whatever you know and they just they scream at you <laughs> you've been there you screwed up you know or like I, I remember that? he told me this is the best one is Ken Mentel told me something that you tell Sunshine you told her to haul ass and took her three trips so I go out there and and this is, um, was on the Dallas show, which was, I think, a Christian station at the time. Okay. I said, what he told me? Sunshine, when you're told to haul lash, you got to make three trips. And I come back, and Ken's face is like, you said that! And I'm like, but you told me to! But you said that! You know? You're mad at me? You want to say what you told me to say that! Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. my goodness. How is that, that happened? Yeah, that, yeah, that happened, you know, a few times. Or, like, you did that wrong, you know? And I, I don't know. You know, because I didn't, you know, like, Sunshine and I, we weren't, I mean, she learned from her and the precious thing, but we were doing things that they hadn't really done before. I mean, she'd done things with Cornette. Mm -hmm. You know, they had the guy managers with the girls, and they did stuff because, you know, he could get beat up. Being a guy manager, you can get beat up by girls, mm -hmm. the wrestling bear, the midgets, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And still get your heat, Absolutely. especially if you're a heel. Absolutely. And the same thing with me. It's like she could beat me up every week. Mm -hmm. Like, I never, I mean, I always used to get the heat on her on TV. But in the house shows, mm -hmm. she always beat me. Right. But but I would come back the next week, a lion, mm -hmm. and they're like, she can beat her up, and she just still keeps coming back. Boy, we don't like that girl. Mm -hmm. You know, she is so annoying. Yeah. And you know, but you, but that's what you do. You mm -hmm. know, the the heels always get the heat on TV to Absolutely. make the people pay the money to, to the see the baby show. face win at the house that's show. That's how so that works. Wrestling has like it's there's like a recipe, which I what. I learned uh, starting at 17, you know, from like Jake and Eddie Gilbert and, and people and, and, and just learning from being around a business and listening and keeping my mouth shut and listening. And, uh, and a lot of people would think because I didn't say anything and I would just be there that I would just, you know, dumb blonde or whatever. But, you know, and I would sit in all those, the booking meetings for WCW when I was uh, announcing the show mm -hmm. and, and hear them talk about running the show and the segment for this and that and the other. And, you know, and I would just sit there, but I would absorb it all. I guess they thought I was thinking about, I don't know, shopping or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I loved wrestling, and so I would, you know, 
osmosis. Absolutely. You know, it came and why me. wouldn't you if you cared about it? Yeah. You know I mean, I mean, yeah, and just to be able to learn. I mean, and I God, I got to you know, and to Dusty Rhodes. I mean, to work with him. I mean, I've got to work with some of the greatest minds. You know, and so of course you want to, you know, try to learn from mm -hmm. them. But um, we, <laughs> but but starting out, you know, we didn't have like a, a template or anything of what females should do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we're trying, you know, we were doing this whole thing and, and Ken, I mean, because he struck Ken Mantel, the booker, he kind of did the whole female thing. So he, um, he knew what was coming up. And when we got to UWF and, you know, we, when we left world class to go to UWF, mm -hmm. Ken kind of took all of us and it was, and it, you know, looking back on it now and I'm thinking, oh my God, we all left, when we left world class to go to UWF, it was kind of the nail in the coffin for world class. Mm -hmm. But in retrospect, you don't think about, you don't realize that until years later. Mm -hmm. And then I think about now, I'm like, oh, I don't think I would have left Fritz and then I think I would have stayed there till it died because, yeah, yeah because yeah. that was like, you know, if I could go back to any time in my career. You know, like world class in UWF, it was the best time of my life. Wow. Yeah. So, um, but um, Ken wanted me to do, um, <laughs> they did a thing with Buddy Roberts where he lost his hair and then he came back with the wig and then with the little, um, what was that, the, the real uh, collegiate wrestlers mm -hmm. thing. And so they tried to get the wig off. So, Ken Mantell comes to me it was so funny I, and I know you know he was working me because now I know he was working me but I remember him coming to me <gasps> I've got a really great idea oh but you're just, I don't know if you can do it oh, you know so he's like doing this whole like you know and so and I never ever in wrestling ever told a, a, a boss or a booker no I always said yes to anything they ever wanted me to do I've never ever said no to anything um, now, I'll say on the other side, and when I got oh, like maybe in ECW, I would or say yes, but then when I would go out to the ring, I would kind of curve it around to make it my way. Or do, you got that experience to yeah. do that. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, and then, oh, I screwed up, you know, or something, but I, yeah. he wanted me to uh, do a, a hair match with Dark Journey. And um, and I was gonna do it, you know. And I, and he, you know, said, how much money? And I, I told him how much. And I don't even remember how much it was. It wasn't a lot of money at the mm -hmm. time, but I mean, this was at the time when, um, even though we had contracts, you would get paid on the house. Mm -hmm. And if the house was up, it mattered where you were at on the card of how much you would get paid. Mm -hmm. So I remember we were in um, Jackson, Mississippi, and. Um, the house was up because it was a five minute match with her mm -hmm. and like, like it, it, even Journey had said this like they all came to see the bitches fight you know they all wanted to see the because it was like a cool thing to I mean you know women and men you know to think that two girls that really hate each other are really going to get into a fight mm -hmm. I mean let's go see that she's going to you know and Journey's promising to rip my shirt off and say ooh I get to see something mm -hmm. you know ooh, could it be so and um so the house was up and I remember getting my paycheck, you know, and seeing, you know, Jackson, because I think we were running two, sh they were running two shows. And like so another, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. like, well, no, like another, like A and B crew. Right. So the other, you know, we were the one crew there and we were kind of like semi or whatever. Okay. But, you know, the last time we were there and the house was down, I got paid 200. This time I got 600. You know, so I was like, yeah, this is great, you know, and I'm like, but you know, but it mattered where you were. I mean, you know, you, you don't just walk in one day. I mean, I was really lucky because, you know, I started in like, um, August and then by November we were like already like semi-main event with Sunshine and, against Scott Casey in the reunion arena. Okay. But it was only because, you know, Johnny and I were really good together and we had we got put into a great program mm -hmm. with Scott Casey and Sunshine. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of, you know, went there. But um, it, and just the way it was, you know, and they were, and, but he was trying to, I think Ken and UWF was trying to redo the same Precious Sunshine thing, but we we're just trying to 
kind of change it over, like mm-hmm. with me and Dark Journey, and then he, but they never did the hair thing, and he wanted to do the hair, and he was like, oh, you can wear wigs, and then she's gonna, tr-. because we were trying to, you know, like, when you tell the story, you want to, you know, not just blow it off, but if you can do something and kind of keep it going mm-hmm. until you can bring someone else in, mm-hmm. because they were gonna bring in Sunshine, and what we should have done is like, which, you know, I think about this now, I mean, oh my God, it would've been so good if Johnny and I would've split, and he would've gone with Sunshine, mm-hmm. you know, and then we could've done a whole feud with you know, that. something like that. Like when yeah. we did the Eddie Gilbert split mm-hmm. and then he went with Sunshine and then that's history, me and Sunshine. And then me and Sunshine could feud and then mm-hmm. Dark Journey could manage for a while and not have the cat fight with right. anyone. But because by then, and then we had Nicola, at the, you know, mm-hmm. the other girls started coming in. So mm-hmm. you could branch, you know, branch it off and tell a story without, without, you know, because, you know, back in the old days when there was all the different territories, you would go somewhere for like a year or two years until you were done. Right. You know, you go and through you the programs right. and then until, you know, loser leave town mm-hmm. or loser eats dog food or, well, you know, whatever. Right. But this way, um, but there's so many ways you don't have to do that like Jerry Lawler stayed in Memphis all those years dusty in Florida mm-hmm. I mean you know there's way I mean if you're a good storyteller mm-hmm. you know and Susan Lucci was a bad girl for what, 30 years on all my children so you can be a bad girl for a long time mm-hmm. you just need to have the good writing to take you mm-hmm. over and, and everything and that's what we were we were doing and I think that would have been really really good do you but think that, that they were just kind of wait for the realism of all these like real life relationships? See, that's what like, I—that's what I really think it was. I mean, back to like UWF and and people can relate to that. Mm-hmm. Like I, I watch wrestling now, and I, I don't. I, they they'll start a storyline and then they just stop it, and then you know, and if they don't get over, it, then they just stop mm-hmm. it. And if there's no plan, it doesn't seem like it's planned out. Mm-hmm. Like because to me, it should be. I mean, when Eddie would book, I mean. You know, you have an end what you want to do. And, you know, like you have this big show in July right. that you want to book. Right. So to get from point A to B, mm-hmm. you know, what you got to do to, to build, build it all up to, to, to get to there. Point. Yeah. Yes. So, um, you know, th- so you had to do that. But now they just, they, they lack that that um, creativity and and I think it's the personalization that makes people go oh well it's not real but you know they really don't like each other you know and make people hmm Mm -hmm. you know think about like I know it's you know when they tell their friends you know oh you watch wrestling you know and they're like yeah I know but oh my god that one girl Mm -hmm. oh she is you know or oh my you know when we did the whole split with the John Tatum and the and we did Mm -hmm. the whole split I mean that was like I don't know if it was art imitating life or life imitating art but um, people didn't know to cheer or to boo or what you know and Mm -hmm. we kind of didn't know what we were doing either Mm -hmm. but you know if we would have been smart and had more been a little bit more smarter to the business mm-hmm. so we would have been more business savvy and stay but I would have never left Eddie I mean I would have never left Johnny mm-hmm. you know? who knows what because Johnny was just he was so talented and so underrated and just you know I look back at the old matches and I'm just like oh my god he was so good right you know but you know, you know Eddie not. never needed me oh I know well I mean I was so I, you know you know that's and I you know Youth. I've apologized to him 20 years after the fact. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, I'm an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I was young. I yeah. didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, you know, in retrospect, you know, I guess yeah. you're really, um, you're an Einstein when you get old. But <laughs> <laughs> if you only knew what you knew, if you only of, knew, if I only knew if I knew what I did now. <laughs> I feel that a lot of people get into the wrestling business very, very young. And then they don't get to make those life mistakes. And then it affects their career because it got to the business so young. Yeah. And so those life mistakes affect the business. Yeah. And it's so sad and tragic when you could have capitalized on something that was so real. Yeah. So real. Yeah. And, and people could have felt that. Yeah. Because a lot of times the soap opera of wrestling, even the real stuff, is what draws people in. Well, yeah, I mean, because you had really good storytellers, as in Jim Ross mm-hmm. and Michael Hayes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's not just one thing that makes wrestling, like I was saying, the recipe. You know, you have to have really good guys 
guiding the storyline for the fans, but then you also have the characters that have to get the people to either love them or hate them, and you can't do that by just wrestling. You have to be able to talk it to, and you have, and and you know you just can't go in the ring and be I'm a good looking guy, and da, da da da, you know, and do that. But you gotta you know do a music video or do this, but you gotta have you talk and have the people get to know you like they know you. Right. And then they want to pay money to mm -hmm. go and see that person because I always thought like wrestling to me was like. You watch your soap operas, you know, on TV, but wrestling, these are the people you see on TV, but you could actually pay money and go and see them live. Mm -hmm. Where else do you get to go and see your good guy and bad guy live? On the regular basis, even. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I mean, and it's like, you know, and um, Cornette asked me this about how come women like UFC and stuff, and I'm like, well, how come the Roman women went crazy over the gladiators? And I mean, those guys were slaves, and they were getting yeah. all kinds of sex yeah. from the from the um, aristocratic women back in the day. I mean, them women would be like trolling down under under there, <laughs> you know, trying to get some of that gladiator uh -huh. stuff because you know they're out there fighting and glistening uh -huh. and sweating. Be men. Yeah, being men, be men. men, 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 you know. <laughs> and but but on the other hand, though, but guys, you know, they. They know what relationships are all about. And it's a shame that, you know, WWE has, they've got beautiful women there, and they got these guys, and they don't take advantage of the soap opera that they could intertwine mm -hmm. and have this guy checking out this girl, this girl getting jealous about that. I mean, just, I mean, because we only, there was only a couple of us, mm -hmm. and we had great, storylines going on but mm -hmm. but oh my gosh you could do it would just it's amazing what you could do the storytelling you could do with men and women because Together. you got you got sex you got violence mm -hmm. you know and you, you and emotion exactly and yeah. it's all together and yeah. people can relate to that mm -hmm. everybody's got dumped before what? you know everybody has loved someone from afar mm -hmm. You know, done stupid, like when we did the thing with the barbarian, like the barbarian coming out there and saving me mm -hmm. because, you know, I got hurt or whatever. I mean, you know, they, they want that. And he's the big, scary guy. I mean, what happened to, um, you know, I, I watch it now and I'm just like, every, it's all cookie cutter. And, you, you know, I don't understand, but like even the females, I mean, you can tell that whoever does their clothing it's the same person yeah. because it all looks the same. Looks the same um the guys are all shaved they all kind of look the same mm -hmm. um you know where's your scary guy where's your hairy dutch mantel you know where's your your really good looking like baby face and then where's your real creepy scary you know where mm -hmm. you got to have your characters mm -hmm. you know to kind of work everybody in together mm -hmm. and um I, just, I don't I don't really see that now. But I remember Vince telling me this in 88. He said, um, we're in Vegas, and he was like, um, you know, one day, one day people will, uh, they'll, they'll buy it for WWF and not for who's on the card. And I won't have to advertise who versus who. I'll just have to advertise, come see WWF. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like, the circus when they come to town once a year and you go to the circus you don't you don't know who's playing at the circus but you go to the circus because it's ringing the bro brothers you know yeah. Bailey circus or whatever and so I remember him saying that to me and I was like oh, that ain't gonna work and now I'm like oh my god yeah because now you know I've heard ads um, on the radio and they'll just say Smackdown's coming that's all they gotta say. Yeah. They don't even. Really, they'll say, "Oh, you'll see some stars like this." This person. But, and this person. Yeah, but they person. don't really. You know, it's just kind of interchangeable. Yeah. Because it, it's to me like if one wasn't there, they could throw another one in, right. and it really wouldn't. Okay. Yeah. Right. You know, there's no individuality. Yeah. Attendance wouldn't spike or it lose, wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't do on anything. Who they're announcing. Yeah, it would just it be wouldn't. like, oh, okay. Yeah. No. It's just like, oh, okay, because we're just see, there to see the brand. We're not there to, there's no emotion tied into right. it. It's like, 
where it's an event, it's a thing to go to. And I think that's why like UFC is doing really well is because, you know, they see the guys doing their promos mm -hmm. and they have the, like the interviews and they show these guys working out and mm -hmm. you get behind them right. and you, right. you know. And those guys actually get hurt in training for the actual fight. Right. And like, they literally have to pull out last minute. Like, right. oh, I was scheduled for this main event fight, but I got hurt in training, so now I have to pull out. So we're gonna substitute this other person who is not advertised for this fight, but he's gonna fill in for me yeah. and rise to the occasion yeah. and take this opportunity that somebody else couldn't take. Yeah. I think that's what's amazing about UFC is that the story, they can tell all the stories they want, but it's always about the hungriest person. Right, the, right, the person or the, the, the Cinderella is. story, yeah. or the, yeah. I mean, and it, they, you know, they're, it's really great. And, you know, I'm sorry, but uh, maybe I am cynical or whatever, but, you know, to me, um, boxing's a work. We, I we've think known that for UFCs. A while. I think we've all known that. For I don't, you know, maybe, I don't know. I, I, you know, to me, if it, you know, if you're betting on it and it's making money, there's got to be somebody pulling the strings somewhere. I don't know. And that's sad. I don't know. You I know, know I, I... When sports I, maybe sports I, and men were men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, <laughs> I still think maybe back in the gladiator times, you know, I, we got to throw them some Christians in there. Right. <laughs> that the yeah. lions eat the Christians right. to get the blood. Right. 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 Get the lions so, up. so at least we know so that, you know, there's the going to be some blood scared. and gore. Right. <laughs> but if too many gladiators meet too many lions, then yeah. the lions aren't scary anymore. Exactly. Right. Yeah. They're not scary anymore. But it's like the same thing, like now these guys go into the ring and they do all this high fly and high spot, high spot, high spot, and there's no story being told. And anybody, anybody can go in there and do it. Um, and to get, like, if I could see, you know, 20 years ago, someone saying, okay, here's your match and it's written down. Mm -hmm. What? Because you have to go out there and you got to feel the crowd. Absolutely. And... And if you screw up, you've got to know what you, you know, what how you to get to. out of it. Right. But if you are, if you learn your match, A, B, C, D, E, okay, you're going to screw up. And I had to work with these guys in, a, a few years ago in New York. And um, it was the worst, I was one of the worst, men. I was so embarrassed. I'm out there at ringside. And they screwed up. And so they just started the whole match over again. Is that right? Oh my gosh. I'm not looking at the crowd and the crowd's looking at me and we're all like, what the heck? Are they doing this over again? I mean, they, without the bell being rung, but uh -huh. they just kind of start, because they had gone A, B, C, you know, they, yeah. and they screwed up. So instead, you of, these take two instead of, or you know, segueing into reset. something, they just say, or either like, if you feel the match is going this way, I mean, one of the best experiences of my life was in friggin' uh, Valdosta, Georgia, and I, um, I was there working with Adam Windsor against Dory Funk, and, um, this is not that long ago. Well, I mean, yeah, it was. I don't know, my years. When, when you get older, you're, the time goes by really, really fast. So something you could say, oh, it was only a few years ago, but it was like 10. But he, um, I remember the crowd was really, really hot. And um, Adam and I, I got, I'm wearing this, um, the uh, British flag dress. Okay. And Adam Windsor's, you know, he's from, you know, he's the British, you know, da 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 da. And we're, you know, and I, I was carrying my dog Milo out to the ring and, um, and just, you know, we were just really obnoxious. And so the crowd, we never, I'd never been to Valdosta with that group, but the crowd was really, really hot. And so um, he was going to beat, he beat, you know, him in the ring, but I'm thinking I was out there doing all kinds of shenanigans. And so I called to the referee that Dory, I said, tell Dory after the match, grab me by the hair, bring me in and pile drive me because we'll get a good pop, mm -hmm. right? And he did it, uh -huh. which, you know, at the time I shouldn't, I mean, you know, I mean, that's Dory Funk, mm -hmm. and I actually called something, mm -hmm. and he did it, it which is like, wow, yeah. and it worked yeah. out, I'm like, wow, yeah. <laughs> but he, you know, and, and so I said that to the referee, and the referee went over there and told him, and so he comes over there, you know, and he grabs me by the hair, and I'm like, ah, 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 you know, and I go in there, and he's looking all around, and, you know, and he puts me up and pal dries me, you know, and I'm just, you know, they had to carry me out, you know, I just had to sell it. And, you know, that was like one of the best things, but the crowd went crazy. I mean, they enjoyed, and we were the last match, uh -huh. so you got to send them home happy, yeah. you know, and I knew we wouldn't be going back there for a while, so, you know, 
do that. I mean, but you got, but if you, you know, if nowadays, you know, if you're getting a script and somebody is writing words for you to say and they don't really know your character or know where you're, if they don't even know where your character's going or know where your character's about, how can they write lines for your character? Only you know mm -hmm. what you want to, you know, mm -hmm. It takes time to um, know what works and what doesn't work yeah. and, you know, get out there and, and what you're comfortable with. And I just, you know, and it's like acting. Acting's really, really hard. I mean, it's very hard for me to take someone else's words. Mm -hmm. That's why I bombed in WWE when I had to do the Missy's Manners mm -hmm. because it was a really, like, scripted kind of. Mm -hmm. And, you know... If Vince would have just let me gone out there and been Missy Hyatt, not a baby face, not a heel, but just been my whiny, complaining, like, oh my God, can am connection, you know, and then like, oh, hello, boy. You know, but, you know, he had it kind of scripted, and it's just like that's taking someone else's words and making them come out of your mouth mm -hmm. and making them sound like they came out of your mouth is really hard. Acting's got to be really hard. Very hard. I mean, but ad lib. I mean, I can do that. You, you know, get in my character, and mm -hmm. we can work it all day. Mm -hmm. But you just kind of go with the flow. Mm -hmm. But you know that that didn't happen, and I was really green and still mm -hmm. not knowing that much about you know my character or mm -hmm. what. Or I mean, I should have just gone out there and did it my way anyway right. because it was your the character. stuff flopped anyway so if i it would if and because we did we ended up doing i think one night we were i think in vegas the next night phoenix and i did the same interview like um i interviewed um i think randy savage and elizabeth and then i interviewed um bobby heenan and somebody and then um honky tonk man and um gary hart not gary i'm sorry um Honky Tonk Man and um, Jimmy Hart. And so, but we did the same the next night, mm -hmm. hoping that it would, I'm like, I don't know how they thought it was going to get any better, you know, because they had me, you know, this like almost scripted like. And I should have just said, I should have just gone out there, but I wasn't as sure of myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think if I could have gone out there and done it myself, I think I could have, I don't think, I know I could have probably got the crowd to have thrown massive amounts of shit at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I love that's I what mean, you wanted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh my God, Terry Funk, you always say, if you get stabbed, you know, coming back from the ring, you're, you're really good. good. I mean, good I remember girl. like in El Paso, oh my gosh. We came back from the ring, I mean, we, first off, we tried to get out to the ring. This was like Sunshine, oh, yeah. Sunshine was gonna get five minutes with me in the ring or something like that. So Johnny and I, we were trying to get out to the ring People were just, we were, the cops were arm in arm. And this is before there was the railings and everything. Okay, you had to fight your way to the yeah, ring, you fight your way back. Right. And so the cops were all around. And so they we came out like about 10 steps and then the cops go back to the dressing room. A lady cop, like she had her gun taken from, I mean, she had her shirt ripped. I mean, the cops are like, we're leaving. Yeah. We're not going out there. So they had to get on the mic and tell everybody, they're not coming out unless you sit in your chairs. Yeah. But I mean, we came, we were like 10 steps out there. I had nacho cheese in my hair. Oh, I had beer. I had people spitting in my face. That's the real I mean, stuff. Yeah. That's the real heat. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, and it, like in Memphis, there was somebody every Monday in Memphis, somebody was um, hurling Gatorade bottles at me from the top, you know, oh, no. busting at my feet and oh, stuff. No. Yeah, and I was like, God, hello, that's so cool. And, um, yeah, but they finally made them sit. But I remember at the match, because we really didn't give them five minutes, they kind of, they, she only got a little bit with me. Mm -hmm. Johnny had just picked me up, and he just used me as a battering ram and ran back in the dressing room, and I had my head down, you know, and going to the back. Because I got, I had been, beat up so many times, you know, to the ring and back and from people and, you know, all the, the craziness. But, I mean, that's good, though. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's if you, you can want. excite that to make people, you know, to get that excited about it, you know, and feel that intensity, 
you know, that's a good thing. You're doing a good job. Yeah, that's you're a doing really your good job. thing. Well, yeah. Period. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you're supposed to be out there to, you know, I mean, I guess I'm old school because I, I believe that, you know, your job is to, you know, the TV is a info commercial and your job is to make people leave their house and come see you. And back in, you know, if you think about it in a world class, we were in the same building every Friday night and it was paid. Mm -hmm. And every Monday we were in Fort Worth mm -hmm. every week. So you had to have something fresh every week to make these people keep coming back and, and their paying money. their money. Right. And then in Tulsa when we would do TV there for UWF, I mean, they never ever, I could, I could imagine someone telling Bill Watts, you got to pay for it and give away free tickets for the TV tape. And, oh yeah, tell yeah. <laughs> so that to Bill Watts. <laughs> that would go over no. like a friggin' fart in church. No. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, no. That, that's just, you would never hear of anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, those people like in Tulsa, I mean, they would come there because they knew they were seeing the TV being taped and they thought they were, and plus they got to see it because we do like two weeks in advance, so they got to know something before everybody else did and everything. But you also give them, you know, good stuff. And then, and the TV show would also leave them wanting to watch it. Next week. Next week, yeah. It would like, you know, Jim Ryan, it's the best in that in Tulsa. You know? <laughs> and he would just, yeah. You know, and, but it would have that excitement, and if you if you watch the shows and you can watch them in, you know, you don't just watch them here and there. It's ideally if you try to watch, especially if you like somebody like let's say I I love um, uh, I I love the Fantastics and um, the the Fantastics versus the um, um, I can't remember now. My head it's too late. I haven't had any sleep. Um, well, when we work with the Fantastics, but they just, if you start from the beginning mm -hmm. and you kind of watch it, how it progresses, then you can see kind of how the angles go and how it starts out and everything. So if you could, if you, if you, if you like to watch old tapes like I do, you know, I want to, if whoever I'm getting into, I hear about, like, let's say the concession stand brawl, but I want to know what happened to lead up to mm -hmm. that. So you want to get your Absolutely. tapes, you know, yeah. to, to go up to that so you can learn, so you can see what everybody's all excited yeah. about. But I mean, but they had it going like so many different layers, you know, because they have this angle going over here, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's at a point getting ready to be blown off, and this mm -hmm. one's just starting, and then this, you know, because if you if you watch like um, General Hospital or whatever, every segment is one of the storylines going on, mm -hmm. you know, and then on Fridays it kind of leaves you until Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a couple of like, oh, what's going to you know, and that's how, like, you know, it, it used to be. Did you feel like you were a big part of that soap opera? Like, um, a lot of times, back before you, there wasn't a lot of women being interjected into angles. It was no. I mean, they were they were kind of like the midgets. They yeah. were they would come into a territory, a and they would you know go around the loop mm -hmm. you know and they would be the same the girl versus the another girl right. and they would just come around the loop and they would do like the midget thing or like like uh, the wrestling bear <laughs> i'm right. smarter than a wrestling bear <laughs> um but um uh, yeah i i don't think the real women really ever got into it so i think we we were kind of like the, to be involved in it and which is great because you know sex and violence i mean and men and women i mean that's you know without it's men and women, mm -hmm. not just men. Right. So, did you feel any resentment from the men in the locker room that women were getting a more prominent role on the show? No, I think you know what. I, at the time, it was new to them, and I think that it was. Um, I think it was just really good TV, and the houses were good, mm -hmm. and even the guys. You know, like I said, they would come out to see us get into it. You know. Um, I think they, th you know, I think it was pretty, it, it was a kind of cool time, you know, mm -hmm. that we were doing something like that. And it's such a shame that, you know, there's all these beautiful women and these guys now and they don't do anything personal, hardly. And, you know, it's yeah. just, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get so disappointed, you know, and I just... 
Well, I'm sure there's a lot of angles that they could capitalize on if they wanted to. There is so much. I mean, the so stuff much that I on. hear about no. in the background yeah. that goes on, if they would just even take 10% of that right. and put it on TV. Oh. Let it go. Yeah. Just let's and, make money. And you got, like, what's so great now is you got the internet and stuff. So you could be planting stories over here, really? you know, and have somebody talking something about somebody over here, like on, you know, talk, you know, Twitter this, about mm-hmm. them, you oh, know. I mean, you can do sure so is. many oh, things. Yeah. yeah. Or someone caught somebody with somebody. Right. Or you just, yeah. If they were smart about it, they'd be crazy using all these I social know. media outlets, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, and they, you know, and they have this WWE TV, and I, I, had, I had thought for the long, I mean, they could be doing, and they got all these beautiful girls, I mean, they could, they're just, you know, missing the boat on just so much stuff that, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I don't even know, know whose fault it is, quite honestly, because I used to just blame it on white men being old and just not knowing what to do with women. Yeah, I really, but you know, what? I used to always say there would never be a woman booking in my lifetime, and I have to bite my words mm-hmm. because you know we Stephanie and she's awesome. I love her character on TV, and uh, and then and then you have Dixie Carter. I mean, who for all the wrong reasons. And and I'm just like they have the opportunity and they're just squandering it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you know. I'm sorry, but if my daddy bought me a company mm-hmm. and I didn't know that much about it, I would hire people around me that knew, and I would learn from them. Right. You know, and try to make it good. You know, make it good. Yeah, make it good. Yeah. yeah. And just, and, you know, and I would go that. back. I would go back and go look at old stuff and see what worked. See that, like the whole Bruno San Martino, Larry Zabisco, Shea Stadium that they drew, mm-hmm. Shea Stadium. Yeah, like go back and look at those angles and see, because everything in wrestling has been done before. Right. It's just you know redo it again, mm-hmm. just kind of change it around a little bit, and everybody steals from everybody. But, you know, and then guys should, you know, but these matches, I just, you know, they can, they can tell a story in a match and get people excited about a match, but they, but they don't, Mm -hmm. you know. I agree. old school. Okay. I agree. (laughs) I completely agree. Um, In, in, within your small time with the WWF, I mean, they really embraced you and they were really excited about doing something with you in that speaking Let me tell you, I was told like when I went up there to Vince and meet Vince and I was like scared to death because all I could think about is I'm gonna get a doll. He's gonna be a missing doll. Yeah, and I'm gonna work at WrestleMania. Do you think he you was know, playing just, upon your maybe narcissism of like, oh, well, I'm gonna get a doll me, now. I mean, I remember watching the first WrestleMania and you know, we working for, you know, world class, we bought it. Mm-hmm. Because we're fans. Right. I was a fan, you know. Hey, I bought it, you know, I watched it. And I'm uh, thinking to myself, one day I wish I could be there. You know, and that's kind of like the thing. Now, the only thing I really wish for is like, I really, really dream. And I don't think my dreams, um, you know, it was always to work at WrestleMania, but I don't think my dreams are too big. But I really, really, I, I thought about this a lot. I want to be the gobbledygooker that's in the egg. And then, have me like crack out of the egg and be in the chicken suit and then have, um, what's his name, that baseball guy? Um, Pete Rose. You, yeah, Pete Rose. Has him, have him like pal drive me or something and then rip off the chicken suit and then I, I and it, but I want the beak on and the tail and be like tarred and feathered kind of and cluck around the ring. I just thought that would be kind of cool. Wow. And that would be my, you know, I would be happy. That'd be, could, I, yeah, that'd be my WrestleMania. Yeah, wow. Just to be, yeah. I just want to cluck around, but I gotta have the big beak, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I want the tail feathers. Yeah, you want the shape. So, yeah, the exactly. Shape. <laughs> uh-huh. So that and a doll. That's all. You know, that's all yeah. I've ever wanted was. Well, it's, it's all about the action figure these days, you know. Yeah. So okay. I mean, it's once you get scanned for it. It's almost like you're usually a lock, and you're just like, it's going to come out, unless yeah. you get released before it comes out. Right. right. Well, I mean, there was a couple of times that I was on the list to get one, like the mm-hmm. Legends, and then it just never happened. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, what do I have to do? I mean, 
you know, there's some guys that have gotten these figures that they were a character on WCW for two months and their character was, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but like they did something really stupid on TV or mm -hmm. they did something and they've had dolls out there in different names, but then they get a doll under that name yeah. and I can't get a doll. I'm like, what? Is that what that? Right. <laughs> no. I think the same, girl. I do. Uh, my short time in TNA, I got scanned for my action figure. And I'm like, you have the perfect dimensions for an action figure. Like, thank you, because I am really short-waisted and really bottom-heavy. And there's just so many problems with my body, apparently. And they're like, no, you have the perfect body for an action figure. And then I got released. Uh, yeah. Well, I was like, I wonder who got my body. Oh, uh, honey, uh, let me tell you. Who got you. my body? Uh, yeah. Who got it? <laughs> let me tell you. They, yeah, yeah, so much happens, like, in things like, you know, missing the boat mm -hmm. here, and it's being in the right place at the right, right time, yeah. and, you know, it's just, you know. No, that's all good. No regrets. Yeah. No regrets, yeah. girl. None at all, whatsoever. Um, so, you went to WWF at we oh yeah, like you. let me tell you, Vince was like, you, you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store anymore. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have people go to the grocery store mm -hmm. for you. You're going to be the next female Hulk Hogan. And I remember Hogan coming up to me and I was like, oh. and he's like, so I, I heard you're here to take my spot. And I went, I oh, know your chest is still bigger than mine. You know, and he kind of laughed and everything. And, and, you know, and I was like, you know, Vince and just blown my head up really mm -hmm. huge and so what had happened is um uwf got bought by crockett and then we knew that was coming up so then i had gone up and met with vince and then vince had told me all this stuff and mm -hmm. so first time i met jim crockett you know i like i'm walking up to him i'm like i went out of my contract i'm going to wwf and i'm gonna get me a doll <laughs> you know and I, he's like and he's like oh well hello hi i'm jim you know and he's like mm. <laughs> you know, back then, I guess when you're young and um, and you're pretty and you think you're entitled to stuff, you oh. just, you, you know, and now, you know, getting older and then you look back and you're like, oh my God, you know, it, so much it's like, uh, it's better, you can get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And I'm like, oh, I could have, you know, what I could have done when I was pretty and yeah. young, you know, and I was like... But yeah, the mistakes that you make. But he, he, you know, he's like, oh, okay, I'll let you out of your contract and stuff. And then forget, two months later, I remember being in Dallas and going up to Dusty going, I don't have a dog, I'm not getting a dog. <laughs> and then like, okay, and Dusty's like, go talk to Jimmy. Uh -huh. And I'm like, and I had to like go up there, put my head down, going, you know, I don't, Cap job, you know? And he's like, okay, well, we're going to do something with you that they didn't think about. And then that's when they let me host the show with Jim Ross. Okay. Or like Jim came up that. I mean, Jim really, really helped me um, because uh, to give me the role as doing the commentating, you know, and the Missy does the mail and the stuff like that. So he was, uh, but Jim and I had so much fun. I mean, you know, the bannering back and forth and everything was really, really fun. And none of that was scripted. Right. That was it just, couldn't be a better person to learn from me. Oh either. my God, yeah. Right. I mean, and he was such a great um, supporter of mine because Eddie um, didn't really support me. Um, he didn't fight for me in booking meetings or anything like that. And, you know, being a female um, at the time, you know, it's very hard for you to fight for yourself. And, um, and he really, you know, fought for me and got me mm -hmm. up there and yeah. stuff. Do you feel like you were breaking any molds as far as a woman being in the commentary chair? Because that's not something that we see a lot of. I mean, there are a couple of promotions today that actually have women doing the commentary, right. but that's not something that you see prominently. Right. You know, right. a lot. Of, actually, right now, the three-person commentator is commentary desk is very popular right yeah. now. Yeah. But there are no women there. Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah. Why is there a woman and they're isn't chiming in a little bit? Why isn't then? there a woman? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's really a shame because it's like, you know, I've come to learn that uh, if women would stick together, we mm -hmm. could rule this world. Well, can I get a high five on that? Thank you. You know, All I'm right. sorry to say, but, you know, um, 
I think the whole beauty pageant thing and stuff that was like this men's conspiracy from the beginning of time. Let's have women fight over us men mm -hmm. and compete against each other for mm -hmm. us men. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be too busy competing and they won't realize how smart they are and that they should be running everything. Right. Well, I mean, listen, Angela Merkel is the Chancellor of Germany. I mean, and look at who is that? Uh, what's her name that was um, in um, England? Um, Margaret Thatcher. Margaret. I mean, look at all these like statesmen women. I mean, come on. Come on. Um. Uh, women, don't, <laughs> women don't start war over men, really. You know what I mean? And that's, not, that's not the history of history right there. You yeah. know? It's ridiculous that we can't work together for the good of what we yeah. are passionate and, you know, about. And what happens is, is when you get older, then you realize that, but then it's kind yes. of like already, mm -hmm. you know, because it would just, um, you know, it, it, women should open up doors for other women and stuff like that, but it just really doesn't happen. I mean, and I, I was, let me tell you, I was, I was just as bad because when, I mean, I would get miffed in WCW when I think of another female's coming, take my spot, <laughs> you know, I'm at it. You know, and it's just like, you know, and they love doing that, like, Medusa against me. Right. And they just mm -hmm. giggle, 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 and mm -hmm. thinking, oh, they're going to, and they all hated it that her and I got, she was married to my ex-husband, mm -hmm. and so, you know, and then they had to do that whole uh, bikini contest for, you know, first lady mm -hmm. and everything. And, you Which know, you won, by the way, you know, and you <laughs> kind of have that first but lady But I was thing. given that yeah. by, um... Oh God, and Gary Michael Capetta gave that to me in like 89. Uh -huh. First Lady of Wrestling, or for, yeah, First Lady of Wrestling, not First Lady of WCW, because I think Liz, there was a poster that said First Lady of WWF, and then Gary Michael Capetta said that in like 89, and it just kind of stuck after that. But, um, yeah, but they tried to do that, like take that name away from me and then have us do that bikini contest and stuff, but they didn't realize that her and I got to be friends, and then we were like, Let's wear our hair the same. So, like one of one pay per view, we had on almost the exact same dress. I had on the long version, she had on the short version, and we did our hair kind of the same. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like a little inside thing because they all want us to fight. Right. You know? Right. So. And that's actually pretty common in the wrestling business as they try to pit two women against each oh, other yeah, for their own entertainment. entertainment. Exactly. For their own so entertainment. Why they just figure out and do that on TV? Yeah. So you could let the women because. Women can draw money and they can, you know, get people interested and get people talking about it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I remember being in the doctor's office one time when I was in WCW and a guy looking at me and going, oh, you're that Missy Hyatt on TV. Every time you're on TV, I just want to turn, turn it off. And I'm like, but you don't. But you don't. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Uh, I think that's a really interesting angle because I feel like right now in women's wrestling, just women have taken control of their own destinies and they have become the owners, the bookers, the promoters. They are in charge of what happens next in women's wrestling and how we are portrayed. And we're not waiting for a man to give us a green light. Well, you know. See, I don't know. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't really see a lot of the now. Mm -hmm. Ladies wrestling because mm -hmm. no one sends me tapes or anything, mm -hmm. so I don't see it. I can send you a DVD if you want. Oh, I'd love I'm that. Give me you, yeah. you better believe give me your address. I'll send it. Okay. There you go. Okay. That's what I like. Okay. I, love, I love my wrestling. Okay. Um, but you know, when I worked with WSU, mm -hmm. um, you know, seeing that, um, seeing that it was a promotion with the girls and built around the girls, mm -hmm. and, you know, and I've never ever, you know, I hate saying this, you know, but I've never, you know, I've women uh, wrestling like guys doing what you know like guys trying to wrestle like a guy just is to me it's not cool mm -hmm. but they've really kind of evolved and everything and it's kind of getting their own niche mm -hmm. or whatever so it's really not that 70s rest you know right. really wrestling and it's kind of getting that new thing but like um uh what is her age um oh my gosh I can't even remember now. Is she going to do it right now? Uh, AJ. AJ uh, Lee. Yeah, AJ mm -hmm. Lee. I remember when she first read WSU, and I knew. Oh, my she was April. Miss April. Yeah, April. Yeah, Miss April. I'm like, 
This girl is gonna be a star. Yeah, you saw that? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. because I um, ended up um, trying to promote this all girl show at this one bar in Queens and I had her work it okay. and I remember, <laughs> So bad. It was the only time I ever tried. I had helping out these two guys that wanted to put on the show at this go-go bar in Queens, and so I had just this little cord, and I knew the girl, you know, and I had her come, and the ring didn't show up. Yes. And so she kind of was like a little upset that the ring didn't show up, and I was like, but I think I paid her 150 or 200 bucks, and so I'm like, let me tell you something, girl, you got paid, pow. You know, and you only got to go out there for like five minutes right. and do a little shit, you know. You got, you got paid. Hey. Pay. And it was right down the road from your house. Yeah. So, you know, knock on wood, you know, that you never had to fly to like Canada mm -hmm. and then get stuck yeah. there by the promoter yeah. and you don't get paid and you don't have a return <laughs> trip home or, you know, so right. I've heard horror stories, you know, stuff, we and, you know. We all know people who have been stuck in other countries like Singapore. Yeah, some Philippines. Yeah. They're like, what? And the show didn't happen and then you were stuck there for how yeah. long? Yeah. Girl. Yeah. Girl, you should call me. And back before, like, the internet, you would get these people that would call you and try to book you on these, like, phantom shows mm -hmm. so they could talk to you on the phone and right. stuff. But now with the internet, you can kind of find out if mm -hmm. there's a show or not. Right. But, yeah, there are a lot of, like, weird, weird, weird crazy things that can happen and she was so new to the business I was like you got cash and not a check mm -hmm. you know because I bank I knock on wood somewhere somewhere I've only had one check ever bounce on me and Polly never owed me money which you know I didn't you know because I'm sorry but I would have never worked there as long as some people mm -hmm. did and have them owe me like 30 50,000 yeah. I mean you owe me $250, I ain't gonna work for you again until I get my $250, you know, let alone $25,000 or $50,000 and forget about it, you know, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, Herb Abrams. <laughs> but I'm not the only one. All right. So, yeah. And I think he ended up dying in the back of a cop car, completely naked with cocaine all over his body. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, you know what? That's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. I'm gonna let this one go. Yeah. Just for the story. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, that's okay. And you know, and I had gotten a free trip to Vegas. My hotel, everything was paid. It didn't okay. cost me money. Right. It didn't cost me anything. You just didn't get paid. I just didn't get paid. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, whatever. That's too bad. That's not too bad. It didn't cost me anything. So right. it's like I'm ahead of the game. Right on. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you brought up the WSU thing because I know that you you don't do a lot of independent bookings these days and I don't want to gloss over your 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 time in WCW or ECW but um, the generation of wrestling that I am coming out of right now there's such a, a women's wrestling boom I could say or mm -hmm. uprising mm -hmm. women are just kind of taking over and not just uh, just wrestling like men there are women who wrestle like women there are women who do bra and panties who are doing hardcore who do cage matches oh yeah no there are... was I forget who it was in WSG but these two girls they did um oh God, I can't remember who it was but they did like a 60 minute match it was probably, probably Mercedes yeah it was Mercedes and Alexis they did 71 minutes I want to say it? I, I can't remember all I know is that that was probably, that was, you know what? I gotta give those chicks kudos, man. Mm -hmm. They just, I mean, they kept it going. Mm -hmm. It told us, I mean, it was really good, mm -hmm. you know? And there's some, there's, you know, there's so much talent out there, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, but I think, you know, I don't think all men wrestling works. Mm -hmm. I don't think all women, I, you know, I think it should together and it could just be, out of this world because I think Agreed. it takes men and women mm -hmm. you know because to me I'm just so old school about the whole storyline stuff mm -hmm. and you need but I mean I was thinking though with the, uh, I was like we need guy managers or something you know we need to get some men in here to mm -hmm. do some stuff and everything but you know no one ever listens to me I'm just the wrestling bear no I think it's <laughs> all types I think it takes all types we need people who can do cat fights 
We need people who can go hardcore. We need people who can go 60 minutes. We need people who can take it to the outside. Oh, yeah. We need people who can cut promos. We need people who can do the whole broad spectrum because it's a whole show. Exactly. Not just yeah. this well, one. Well, it's like a recipe. You don't just mm -hmm. eat all chicken, but you need, you know, your spices Chicken's good. Chicken's and good. stuff. But, and yes. Yeah, you yeah. need all the other stuff mm -hmm. in there to make it good. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's like these some people that, you know, they try to change stuff. And I'm just like, you know, it's really basic. <laughs> it's really basic. And it's, you know, it's easy. From, yeah. Don't tell anybody. It's just easy. go back and look at some of the old stuff and steal it and, <laughs> and turn it around and make it, make it more today. 2014, y'all. You know? Yeah. 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 Uh, That's it. Agreed. Well, I don't want to shortchange anybody because I do want to talk about your WCW and your ECW because that was good stuff. That was good stuff, girl. Um, shortly after, you know, UWF, it got purchased by Crock Moments, right. and there was that whole turnaround, and eventually you ended up in WCW. Yep. Which but I went through Memphis. Right. And, but and you know, CWF. I, I really think I wish I would have started in wrestling. Well. But five years earlier because there's I missed some territories. I never got to work like really the Florida territory mm -hmm. back in the day when they lived in Tampa and mm -hmm. they did all those towns. That would have been so cool. And um, I never got to do like the old WWF when it was like the Northeast or something. Mm -hmm. Like I just, you know, I kind of missed out on you know, and God, I think Texas had like three territories Texas at once. Is huge. Yeah, I mean it was just, and yeah, I, I kind of missed out on that. But so now really it's totally to different. You really enjoy those different styles and enjoy those different experiences. Oh, yeah, it was great because, you know, you would go from one territory to a different one, and it was totally different, mm -hmm. you know. Like Memphis is totally different mm -hmm. than, you know, their style somewhere right. else. So. Right. And people don't realize, like, in, when we did Memphis, we were doing live TV on Saturday morning, and that TV got... I think it's still in the record books as um, with the highest ratings for a live local uh, weekly television show because they got something like whatever the rating was, it was like 99.9% .9 of the people were watching that on Saturday morning. And I don't think anybody, I don't think any other show. Not football, nothing, because I get in the job of the being the weekly mm -hmm. lot, you know, weekly television show in, you know, in, in a market like that, that nobody's ever beat, no one's ever had that rating before. And Memphis did. And, but they did every week. Yeah, every week. Yeah, every, every week. you know, it couldn't be done now. That's right. Oh, I, nobody. I, I don't do think that. anybody could nobody run could the same building. No. And and no. and they ran. I think it was what Monday night was um, Memphis every week, and people paid every week. Yeah. So that's a, you know, and that's you got to be a good storyteller, and you got to really have it planned out mm -hmm. and what you're gonna do. But they did it well down yeah. there. But I mean, really but now they got it so much easier. I mean, all you got to do is do the TV. I mean, like how that's a lot less to. To come up with so many segments, then you got to do that. I'm just thinking it's a lot easier. I think it's a lot easier. Yeah. I think um, as time goes on, we all have television, we all have the internet now. Everything's a lot easier. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But you know, also you got like you know 300 stations, and you're competing with other people for stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, and I understand that wrestling's changed and now, you know, it's more of a television product and they get money from advertising mm -hmm. and things like that. And so you gotta make, you know, so you gotta tailor your show to be like that. And that's cool because, you know, there's a lot of good stuff you can give on TV, but if you're still running house shows, which you are, mm -hmm. there's gotta be a lot of stuff that you ought to save to make the people want to come come yeah yeah absolutely i mean you know sport people are still going out to sporting events mm -hmm. i mean god they pay like oh my gosh for you at uh ufc it's so freaking 250 dollars or something a ticket yeah so much money and they're getting it yeah they are and the people are paying it yep and they oh are. yeah because they'll pay mm -hmm. if you want to see it you'll mm -hmm. pay or you'll go mm -hmm. or like you'll drive from tallahassee to freaking macon georgia <laughs> 
Plus Megan. Man, they love wrestling there. Oh, yeah. I remember this is a good story. Um, me and my girlfriend, before, you know, when I first started liking wrestling, and we, uh, we, were gonna, we wanted to go see the Florida Boys. Okay. And so we uh, called the Tampa office, and they used to have an answer machine, and they would tell you, Tuesday night, we're here. Wednesday night, we're here. You know, so, so, I, was like, so I called my friend up, Cindy. And I'm like, Cindy, uh, they're in a Mockley tomorrow. And then Friday, I think, was Miami or something. And I'm like, you want to go? And she's like, okay. So I'm get the twins in back when it was like only 89 cents a gallon for gas. Oh, so you could good time. Yeah. Good time. So, because now, I don't think, we couldn't have been road dogs back then. <laughs> Traveling all around mm -hmm. where we did. But we get there, and we go to the high school, you know, and, and we're like, where's the run? They go, oh, that was last week. <laughs> Yeah, but we ended up going on to Miami and being with a friend, and then we found we found them the next okay. night. But yeah, yeah, that was the way before. <laughs> Once again, uh, another proof of technology not keeping up with everybody. Yes. Else. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna get us back on track here. Okay. Real quick. Um, so you did a short stint in USWA, mm -hmm. and then another short stint in CWF. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you guys moved on to WCW. Yes. Yeah. Yes, WCW. girl. Were you ever put back in a commentary position? Um, well, no. When I came back, I kind of came back as a manager of the Steiners. Okay. Originally? Yeah. Okay. When, we, when we first came back, okay. it was kind of like, I kind of managed Eddie, but not really much. And then they kind of just, I was there, mm -hmm. and it was like a package deal. They didn't really know what to do with me, and they threw me with the Steiners. And then, and it wasn't until later on, until Jim came up with the idea to put me back, you know, as the co-host and the host with him yeah. and stuff. And yeah. so, then I, I did that, and, so. And that was working really well. You were yeah, oh, that was going great and everything. And then, you know, uh, personal things happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a certain person knew that I really didn't want to be a manager anymore. And then the next thing I know, I'm not hosting the show anymore. And I'm managing the Nasty Boys. Gotcha. Which, and, you know, at the time, I was thinking, um, and I even, I think I even said this to Dusty. I was like, you know, I go, you have the Hollywood blondes here. You know, it was, um... Uh, um, Austin and um, and um, Pillman, right? Hollywood Blanche, and they were doing that thing. Okay, and um, I had just moved from LA back to Atlanta, and I was like, you know, and I'm blonde. I'm like, you know, this would be a really great fit for me to manage the Hollywood Blondes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could really be obnoxious, <laughs> you know, because the Nasties did not need me. Yeah. I, it was, you know, I, it was strained. Yeah. I mean, they didn't need me to talk. I mean, neither did Austin or Pillman, but I wouldn't have needed, I mean, I could have had my chimed in to say whatever I needed to, but, you know, it would have been, the better, better, better kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And we even, all three of us had even talked to, they had taught in WWE, and we were going to take the whole Hollywood Blondes there, mm -hmm. but all of our contracts came up at different times, right. and we couldn't figure out how to do it. And then when they, when the Nasties, they screwed them on the belts, and they did the screw, mm -hmm. which, you know, in real life, it was a real, real life screw. Real life um, screw, screw job. Yes. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and it kind of, you know, and then everybody went their ways and became superstars <laughs> and stuff, so... Yeah. But you Stuff were, happens. you know, you were finding your place again back as a manager, you know. Yeah, I, to, I, I love that. I mean, let's say I love being out at ringside. I mean, I, I, you know, I love having that control of the people to make people stand mm -hmm. up on their chair and throw mm -hmm. stuff at you. That's awesome. It, it's complete, absolute manipulation is mm -hmm. what it is. And oh, that's, yeah. you know, as a heel and getting people to really hate you that much. You know, it's I so think you know, I I know why. You know, I, I didn't know then, but you know, getting older. But you see all these like rock stars and people, and then they get into the drugs mm -hmm. and all that other stuff. You know, I I kind of understand that because you know they've gotten up on stage, and I'll never forget um, who was it. Um, oh God, <sighs> he's a guy from Jersey. Um, bon Jovi? No, Spring, Rick, no, Rick no, not Rick Springfield. Um, He's from Australia. Rick, um, what's his name? He's from Jersey. He's a, um, Rick, or is it Rick? Anyway, I remember him, you know, doing a concert, and he did this whole thing, like he had these people stand up, 
sit down. And then he told these people, stand up, sit down. You know, and the way he had that control of the mm -hmm. place. And I remember um, we, uh, Tammy and I did the Brian Pillman Memorial Show, and we were like semi, it was um, Chris and Tammy, uh, me and I think, who was the guy? I, I forget the guy. Anyway, we had this whole, on the indie thing, that we had this whole, like, little match set up. Like, me and Tammy were kind of like, at each other, like we were going to, you know, we're smacking each mm -hmm. other, you know, talking stuff and you, everything. But anyway, at the end of the match, what happens is, is um, the, uh, we get turned around and uh, we end up rolling up. I end up rolling up Chris and she rolls up that guy. And they, you know, one, two, three, and we beat, and then we get up like we're gonna fight, and then everybody's like, yeah, we're gonna fight, but then we end up hugging, and then we go around, and we, we kind of like, and we make that side stand uh -huh. up and sit down, and then we go over yeah. to this half, her and I, you know, and we make them stand up and uh -huh. sit down. And I'll never forget when we're coming back, and it was, I think, Dudley's or somebody who was the next, the next match. And they were pissed because we, we just had the crowd going crazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, me and Tammy come back and you follow that, boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. follow yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, because it was just that whole control. But I know that, like, you know, the, the singers and stuff like that, you know, they get that control mm -hmm. thing and then you don't get that because it's just, you know, it's, it's that feeling. Yeah, and that wasn't scripted for you. That was a feeling, correct? What? Uh, the, you and Tammy going oh, out there and oh, doing that. Oh, when we that. did our stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. And it was, and I'll never forget that um, Evan Crane, Courageous or something. Evan Courageous. The guy, yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember him saying because he ends up, he was upset that he had to lose the match or whatever, that he got, gets rolled up by Tammy to lose. And I'm like, oh, duh, I mean, no one's going to remember that because that's not really what it was about. Mm -hmm. It was like, they... It's a screw job, and everybody's getting screwed in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we anticipated that we were going to fight, and then we don't. Mm -hmm. But then we still made everybody happy. Right. You know, things like that. I mean, to yeah. twist and turn, and to throw a swerve in there, mm -hmm. and things like that. But he was still very upset that he. <laughs> Dude, it's a charity event. <laughs> you know? Don't be silly. Never want to mention my Stop life. <laughs> yeah. Stop it. Ed. Be quiet. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, so you return back to managing, everything's going really well, mm -hmm. and then there was an incident that and eventually led to your dismissal yeah. from WCW, and we don't have to talk too much about it, oh, but... No, I mean, no, the thing was, is, you know, um, the, it was a pay-per-view, and uh, always one of the nasties was always getting hurt or something, and so... This is another thing where you can't script a match is because one gets hurt and then they were supposed to do, um, it was a uh, stop the clock or something and he was supposed to stop the, the timing. Mm -hmm. And so I had to, he, so he's like, you go in there and, and do it. So I had, I went, I think I jumped on Sting's back or something because I had to stop the, you know, get the referee mm -hmm. to stop the thing. And, uh, you know, and he threw me off and part of my booby popped out and then, I had a hawk going, kayfabe the boob, kayfabe the boob, you know, because I remember standing up going, ah! you know, I'm doing this, and he's like, kayfabe, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, and, yeah. and they got a picture of that, yeah. and then, you know, and then the picture being, you know, made into a big thing, you know, and then I asked, but what it mainly came to, uh, you know, a lot of, because people don't really care about this, but, um, we had did a uh, Clash of the Champions before the pay-per-view, mm -hmm. and, um, what it was, was, okay, I'll set it up, I'll try to do this quick for you. Um, the boss at the time, what was his name? He was one of the suit. they called him the suits. I forget who it was. Anyway, he had called him, it was mainly about the picture, but he had asked me about the, how did, what did I think about the Clash of the Champions and the pay-per-view was coming up. And I go, well, I don't know about the whole show, but can I explain to you from my, my point of view? I go, um, it was the Nasty Boys Ver, um, against um, Mankind and the other scary guy. Um, anyway, so it was um, the match on TV, or the match of The Clash had a time, 10 minute time limit, but at the pay-per-view it was a no time limit. Mm -hmm. At what they were, at the end of the match it was supposed to be they got the three count right at 
the 10 minute gotcha. and then they go one, two, okay, ding, 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 ding. 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 Wow. And then, you know, they get up, they want, and then they take the belts away and they go no. So then they go, oh, well, if it's a no time limit match, then they can win. Right. Well, the camera guys or whatever, or I don't know what happened in the match, it was live, you know, the clash is live. Mm -hmm. And so the people at home didn't actually see they didn't get the camera on the three count. They didn't realize why they grabbed the belts and everything. Okay. But then they do that, and then I come in screaming, and then both the ugly guys kiss me. And I'm like, pet, 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 pet. So on the, they do like that little uh, replay, the slow-mo. So instead of on the slow-mo, when they you know cut to it, showing the one, two, three count, right. and then winning in the belts and then taking it away and then right. saying, oh, and that's Thursday night, and then Sunday night it's going to be no time limit, right. they replay the ugly guys kissing the blonde girl. Right. So I said to him, I told him that, I said, I would have showed, you know, I go, I'm not selling, you know, no one's going to pay to see ugly guys kiss the blonde girl. But people would buy the pay-per-view because knowing that, hey, you know, the tag team champions, if there's no time limit, they could win because they won on 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I said, and they didn't convey that. And so Bischoff, you know, came to me and he said, I went over his head talking about business and don't ever do that again. Mm -hmm. And that, um, and I was told I was getting a contract and then, and then, you know, I was getting, my new contract was coming up for renewal because I think I had it like every two years or something. Okay. And, um, you know, I already negotiated and everything. That was fine. And then um, that happened. And then when I talked to, what was his name? I forget the guy. It, it was one of the soup guys at WCW. And then uh, Bishop, you know, you know, he got in my face. He was like, you went over my head. You know, I was like, he just asked me what my opinion was and I gave him my opinion you know I'm not supposed to have an opinion right. you know but by this time I you know I was a little bit smart to wrestling you've been around a couple yeah, of years yeah you know, know. and, I, you know, and I've been in, been in those booking yeah. meetings and been every you know and I'm just like been around you know, some and of the I, best wrestling I, minds. yeah and I'm yeah. just like you know have an, you know, if someone's going to ask me, you know, I give my opinion. And I guess, you know, because I'm talking to, I mean, and I'm sure maybe he asked Bishop, like, well, why didn't they show that or something? And so he got called out on yeah. it. And so, you know, the next thing I know, you know, well, you're fired. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah, that's what happened. Wow. So, and I didn't really think, I thought it was a joke at the beginning. Like, really? What? what are you doing? What? Yeah. So, wow. but I know what it all stemmed from because you know he was good friends with my ex-boyfriend, and um, mm -hmm. him, that's the reason why I became a manager because I broke up, you know, with mm -hmm. him, and I guess it hurt his little feelings. I guess so. Uh, yeah. Did you get a lot of support from the wrestling community as far as because wrestling's always been viewed as a man's business, mm -hmm. man control? Well, you know, um, and... uh, Mick Foley said, um, um, I think um, a current affair interviewed them and Mick said something about I hope you go after Ted's deep pockets and get it girl and then I think he got fired like this <laughs> week I think um bless his heart and um you know and I had some people you know and even Eddie my you know he had called me and said hey if you need anything you know we'll help you mm -hmm. and my thing wasn't it I really didn't give a rat's ass about the boob thing my thing was is that I had a really sweet merchandise deal and the year before my hotline and I used to get all in trouble for talking about personal stuff on the hotline mm -hmm. yet my hotline some weeks made thirty, forty thousand dollars on Sunday alone right. and your world champion at the time I'm not gonna say any names mm -hmm. he was on Thursday night and he was doing three hundred dollars right. people wanted to hear the lies. I would get the Star Magazine mm -hmm. and I would just come up with lies about which wrestler is going to be taking his wife or his girlfriend on the bruise cruise. Give me a call on the hotline and I'll <laughs> tell you. You know, and I mean, and even Steiner got mad at me about that. I'm like, dude, it's a work. Mm -hmm. I go, you know, I'm just getting people to call the hotline. Yeah. But I would talk about, you know, how I was out in LA doing this or I went here. I mean, I would just talk crap because they, you know, they had Jim Ross to give the technical wrestling mm -hmm. stuff, but you know, they wanted to hear juicy gossip dirt from me. And so 
one that that year when I got the sweet deal, you know, I ended up getting a check. I remember asking the guy, he's like, uh, "How much do you think you get?" And I go, "Well, I because I used to I used to get the ratings, so I knew how much I made. You know, it's ninety nine cents a minute, mm-hmm. and I knew like." They had a deal like it was a 60 40 split, okay. And how much you now figured out, but I mean, I used to could walk to the ring and kind of calculate the house when you're walking oh, yeah. out the ring. Oh, okay, you got how many at ring size? Yes. 25 oh, oh, okay, oh, the house is yeah. this, and we're this, so that's what you know. And he taught me that, <laughs> you know, how to calculate. So, um, I kind of knew, but then, then after the then they wouldn't let me have my ratings anymore the oh. next year. But I remember saying to the accountant, it's around $33,000. And he's like, oh, yeah, you're right. And, you know, but I got that. And mm-hmm. then um, the next year, and I had, my ratings were just as good, you know, just up there. And I know, um, I ended up getting a check for like, I think, um, $1,200. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you did not do that, you know? And so it was more like, how dare you? Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And, and so that's, I got the lawyer. And so when, and I got this, this female Jewish chick. I mean, they're the best lawyers. And um, She got it done, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. And, um, you know, so she just goes in there and she's like, okay. So she starts asking me questions about stuff. So she's like, you know what? We're going to sue them in federal court. And we're going to sue them. This, 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 you know, and that. And the kitchen sink. And I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I don't care. Yeah. And um, so they did. I they mean, did. I didn't really give a rat's. I mean, you know, it wasn't, I don't know, sexual harassment, whatever. Um that was had anything really to do with it. And I know we played it up in ECW uh-huh. and we did it as a joke because of, it originally really wasn't about that. Everybody made it seem like, oh, it was all, but no, it was really about, you know, I had a contract and I was supposed to, oh, and then my calendar, they made like 10,000 copies. I mean, and I had a sweet, I got one third. Okay. I was I getting a third of the hotline. Amazing, yeah, right because right. I wasn't getting that much a year. Okay. <laughs> so, because when I um, did the, did my contract with um uh, wasn't Kip Fry. I think yeah, it was Kip Fry. He's like, um, you know, we'll give you we'll give you this much of a raise, but um we'll give you, you know, you'll get this thirty three percent. So the company like so like with the calendar it'd be the company that made it got thirty three and then WCW got thirty three mm-hmm. and I got thirty three. Right. Well, you know, and they had made 10000 of them, and they all sold, and then I get a check for $12. What? Yeah. And so then they start trying to say, oh, they gave me, the, they gave the, uh, the lawyer the accounting from the hotline, and they tried to, they had people's, like, the record, I mean, you would do it from home, mm-hmm. and you would call up and do it from home. So there was nobody there, but they would have, like, people's parking, and, like, they, they put all this, like, stuff on there, all this, like, expenses. Oh, okay. But and I'm like, wait, those expenses weren't taken out the year before, and it's the same contract yeah. and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, why you got to screw, I mean, I, I mean, you You're took my job. You're idiot. You know, you yeah. know. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. they, they would have never heard any. If they would have just paid me what they owed me, they would have never heard anything from me again. Right. You know, I would have. You but know, it is what it is. Yeah. But oh. yeah, you know, I just kind of it was like stand up for myself. Absolutely, and yeah. as, as everybody should. You had a contract. You know, yeah. So they Which pay. really, you know, kind of aggravates me now um, because. Um, you know, WCW got bought by another company, mm-hmm. which until they bought those contracts, Correct. And so the video anyway. should have rolled over and all of yeah. But I think that's why there's no videos of me out there or anything. Wow. So that's why. But you know, they have the internet now, mm-hmm. and that's a pay, and people are subscribing it. And they had the twenty four seven, and they were showed all the old stuff on twenty four seven, and that was a pay thing. Mm-hmm. So well, where's my percentage? Right. What about the network now? That's yeah, money. even that. But right. it was when they had that the the WWE twenty four seven. You know, and people paid what was six ninety nine or right. something extra on the cable, and then because people would tell me, oh, you were on it all this week. I'm like, okay, that's a, it's not free mm-hmm. on television. This is a pay thing. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Where's the money? But you know, I, you know, to me, it's just like mm-hmm. it's not worth. 
the hassle, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, you know, I, I mean, I had my lawyer, you know, send a letter, oh, this is her address to send her, um, the, um, World resort, World 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 World. World. yeah, right. That didn't work. I thought yeah. I just phoned it out that yeah. day. He said, well, just in maybe case. you lost her address. Just in case you lost it. <laughs> Here it is. Because I, I was told that Elizabeth's family gets her checks from her stuff. Oh. But then I heard someone else say they ain't got crap. Right. Yeah, they haven't got nothing. So, but I had heard that. So I was like, but wait a minute. So this is the 24-7 that mm -hmm. they, they, they were paying people, you know, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm thinking, okay, so if that stuff aired of me, and they aired it like every 24 hours or how they aired it, mm -hmm. and it aired for, you know, out of that 24 hours, and I was, you know, six hours out of that, then, you know, I can kind of calculate that up in my head about what percentage it should be. Mm -hmm. And then you have so many subscribers at six ninety nine, and then the cable company takes that much, and then this in here doesn't take too much to figure it out. And that's what I don't understand. Like, let me tell you, this, the, the WWE, their network thing, mm -hmm. um, they didn't have password protection on there. Are you serious? Did you hear about that? Yeah. No. Um, yeah, they just found out that um, that when they were given, you know, you buy the subscription, that five or six people you could give out the, the username and password, that, you know, six other people could be watching it at the same on time. On your account, right? Yeah, on your yeah. account. On your that, account. Because usually, like, if anybody's ever had a pay website, you know that you have it, like, the IP address and password mm -hmm. protection, you can only get it from that. And if someone else from another state uses your password and stuff, it makes it void. Oh. I mean, what idiot in that company didn't know that password protection? Because they were, they were trying to say that they only had so many subscribers, but then they figured out why. Because at least five, five people have been mm -hmm. watching on one subscription. I'm like, yeah. so nobody figured out having password protection? Like Netflix. Hello? Yeah, yeah sure. I'm like, oh yeah, my sure. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, that's, uh, somebody's head should have rolled on that one. I'm just, and I knew about that like 10 some years ago. Not up on technology, are we? Yeah, oh. but I was thinking to myself, you know, and they were, they were saying that they need to make like this million dollars, million, they need a million subscribers to break even. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No. You figured that how many subscribers they have, and I know, I'm sure WWE has their own billing company that bills it, right? And they're not using a third company billing system that takes MasterCard and Visa and American mm -hmm. Express, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they got that. So they're making their own, like it's eight between 18 and like 18 to something like 30%. It can be different percentages, different companies take it. But mm -hmm. I'm sure because if they have their own, um, they have their own um, travel agency to get that percentage right, for all the tickets, yeah. but I'm sure they would have their own, they set up their own billing company now. There if they go. didn't set up their own billing company, then someone yeah. else's so, head should have rolled. But, but um, because then they could be making that percentage off the credit cards. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to pay a fee for, you know, MasterCard and Visa, but it, but that's, you know, you have the billing company, and then, but all the rest is like pure profit on the internet. I mean, it's like, you don't have to give that to cable companies. You don't have to give that to anyone. I mean, the profit on that is just unbelievable and I'm like thinking they said they need to make a mil they need a million subscribers to break even mm -hmm. every month that's ridiculous well somebody's screwing somebody somewhere because I don't know what line like their um, the computer who they're using like what ESPN's mm -hmm. um something but there's somebody's making a whole lot of money because that I mm, there's something fishy going on there. <laughs> Not having <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah. That's Not just enough. yeah. Because I, mm -mm. I, I know what the percentage. I mean, I know what you what you know what if you spent ten dollars on a website and what mm -hmm. your what you actually you know mm -hmm. what your profit is mm -hmm. and yeah. Something's, I don't know. Imagine that. There might be some hand, I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. A corporation that can't keep control of its own accounting. 
Imagine that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, hey, listen, WCW did it. I mean, they had Turner Home Entertainment did, they got all the pay-per-view money, and, um, like, I think the merchandising, the pay-per-views, and then, but WCW paid all the contracts just off the house shows. So they were doing creative bookkeeping then because Turner Home made the money and the WCW, mm -hmm. you know, like tax write, you know, tax write off stuff. So, you know, there's ways of getting around that stuff. Yeah, but in the I mean, end, listen, when you, if you're not making money, you're not making money. Exactly. You know? Right. Oh yeah. You when can't no one's make making, money. No here. one's making money. Yeah. But yeah. But I mean, you know, there's creative, you know, creative bookkeeping. You know, we're all aware of those things. I went to school for accounting. So oh, I, okay. I'm well aware. <laughs> Um, I want to touch just briefly okay. on ECW okay. and the women that were involved with that company, you being one of them. Um, that, it was awesome, what yeah. an amazing time yeah. being wrestling. Oh, uh, it was fun. And, you know, but at the time, you know, I, um, I was doing it there mainly just for fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't like... Um, you know, I learned that I could live in New York City, and if we could make it there, you could make it anywhere. And um, <laughs> you know, and I was bartending, and you know, doing my stuff, and you know, just um, enjoying life. And so, when I went to work for ECW, I was doing it more because I loved the business and I wanted to do it, and it wasn't that I wanted the money or needed the money or anything like that. And so, I looked at it from a totally different, you know. I had been there, and I had done that, and, you know, I'm just here. And, you know, Paul got mad at me so many times, you know, because I was supposed to be a leader in the, you know, I'm supposed to lead these other girls. Okay. But I was just more like, like, you know, like, you know, I'm just here to have fun, you know, eat some popcorn and go out there and, you know, do whatever. And then when I uh, decided to, I had the opportunity to go to AWF. Okay. And, um get to announce the show with Ken Resnick as a real announcer because I knew I'm getting older mm -hmm. and I can't be the dumb blonde stupid anywhere and I would really like to be taken seriously as an announcer and I was giving that opportunity and so I took that and I'll never forget Polly called me if you show up at that that AWF um, uh, press release party at, in um, Times Square I'll never speak to you again you know and, and I did, and I took Kimona, and I shouldn't have done that, and whatever. <laughs> she chose to go. Where did yeah, you go? Oh, I know, I know. But, you know, I love Paul, and, and you know, um, I will always love him, and he's just, he's one, he's one of the good guys and everything. So. I mean, he, he gave a lot. Yeah, and, and, he's, and he's so smart, and, um, you know, but he learned a lot from Eddie, and, uh, you know, he, um, but he, he's very, he's very talented, very smart, you know, and I told Cornette this, you know, it's like, um, you know, because I asked him, I said, how much you lost in Smoky Mountain, and Paul lost, you know, and stuff like that, and I'm like, and, you know, Paul's company might have lost money, but Paul never lost any money. Really? I, I don't think he did. Not I mean, I'll, I, I'll, and I'll say this to anybody, I mean, maybe his company went bankrupt, and maybe his company owned everything, but... Paul never lost a friggin' penny in his life. Good for him. Yeah, I mean, Paul's smart. Good for him. Yeah. I think I've, I've promoted two shows in my whole entire life, and I've probably lost $200. That's so I'm, bad. I'm, I'm in the hole right now. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> yeah, he's better than losing two grand. <laughs> right, right. I but did you lessons. learn? Oh, I've learned a lot, okay. but what I invested in was definitely worth the money, yeah. so... Uh, well, you know, at least you didn't have your business partner um, steal uh, your money and then go buy a wrestling ring and t-shirts and all this other stuff and then, um, and then um, have the different vendors, instead of sending checks to your company's name, have this check sent in his name and then... Um, yeah, steal a bunch of money and then not pay your American Express bill that, you know, had all everybody's mm -hmm. um, uh, flights and hotels and all this other stuff on and they were supposed to be paying it every month uh -huh. and it never got paid. Uh -huh. so, you have yeah. to pay them Express every month. You have to pay that off. Every yeah, month. it's supposed to be paid yeah. off, but they have that sign and travel. Yeah. And it can, and, and if someone's not watching it, you yeah, they can really get you good. Yeah, sad. So sad. <laughs> so sad. So sad. So sad. 
Uh, oh, you want to talk about Stevie Richards? I do want to okay. talk about that. Yeah, because we but... made fun of the whole sexual harassment thing and Stevie's yeah, doing the papers with just... me. Because it was more of a joke because Paulie knew the real story. Yeah. It wasn't about sexual harassment. Right. But of course... Everybody knows sex and violence sells, and so, you know, hard copy and this and that and the other, you know. Hey, they weren't, it doesn't really, you know, just because the girl didn't make her percentage off of her contract for her 900 hotline, it's not really juicy, but, ooh, sexual harassment. That's juicy, and that sells. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, yeah, so we did that, and that was fun. That was fun. Steve Richards is always involved in the funnest angles. Yeah, I love Steve. He's awesome. He gets to work with all the coolest girls. Yeah. Stevie's really awesome. Big Stevie. He's the man, kind of. Yeah. He's kind of the man behind the girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's always right there next to you. He's awesome. He's awesome. That's so cool. Like, I, I, you have so much to talk about, and you've done so much <laughs> in wrestling. I just want to know, what are you into right now? Like, are you watching anything as far as there anything oh, yeah. wrestling yeah. Oh, I, that you're I, watching? Let me tell you, I, I love wrestling. Um, we have... Um, Oh, gosh, I can't, I can't say his name. Nakam, Nakam, in New Japan, Nakamura, Nakam. Sorry. And, you know, and I've been learning German, and it's like, I can't even speak English good enough. I have to learn German. <laughs> yeah. Nakamura, Nakam, Nakamura. That sounds wrong. Is that right? Okay. Anyway, I think he is so talented. I mean, he just, the way he sells and just his the working and the way he's like really true it's like real you know I think he's awesome I think he's awesome, awesome. and you know and I and of course I watch you know I watch it I can't help it mm -hmm. I mean you know it's on I just can't I yeah. you know I'm not just because I'm not doing it doesn't mean I'm just gonna stop and go I don't like it anymore no you know mm -hmm. I I I, I look I love wrestling. <laughs> Do you see any of your influence in wrestling today? Do you um, see, as WWE now has a female who's coming up in the ranks and learning to work commentary, we have women all over who are taking the reins and creating their own companies, who yeah. are taking control of their own destinies and creating opportunities for other women so that... Um, Women can have a place to. Uh, yeah, that's what I tried to do like ten years ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Oh yeah. No, no. I mean, I don't think I had anything to do with any of that. But oh, I, just I can think tell it's you that you did. Oh. I think I'm pretty sure you did. Oh, I'm pretty okay. sure you oh. were a little influenced on that. <laughs> this much, if not this much. I don't know. I don't know. I think it could have been any blonde with big boobs. I oh, think, yeah. but there's so many I of those out in the world. Yeah. I think it took the right one, you yeah. know. Well, and yeah, I was just being in the right place at the right time. Oh. <laughs> I'll accept that <laughs> answer, but I don't think it's just that easy. Yeah. I really don't. I think you should take a little more credit no, for. I can't. For I, you know what? I think any female that has done anything in this business, I they. Earned it on their own. Absolutely. Yeah. But I think you're an innovator as far as marketing with calendars and videos. You, you, you did commentary. You did ring announcing. You did just about everything. You know what I mean? And you did everything that was asked of you. And yeah. you did it. You did it. Mm -hmm. And that's a true... That's a, a well, true I, work. I am just know that yeah. women can draw money. Mm -hmm. I mean, I... You know, when... Um, <laughs> when I saw the one year from the hotline and I wasn't getting nothing from it, that it paid my, just on my Sunday, had paid my salary six times over. Wow. You know, I'm like, wait a minute, you know, they made money off me. Mm -hmm. You know, who else can say that, that they made that much money off of them? You know, and then I got my percentage off of it, you know, and everything like that. So I know women can draw. Mm -hmm. You know, but they got to be in their right, you know, you got to put them in their right where they're at so they can do it. Because it takes every, I don't think, only, I don't think there's ever the main event doesn't draw the whole car. I think it takes everybody, you know, that draws it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, but you got to have that, this one over here and this over here and this over here. Mm -hmm. Too, mm -hmm. you know, and then one's got to be really hot now and then the other one's really hot, you know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of to go. I like that. Yeah. 
Um, but there was there's one thing I'd like to ask you about is you have a really big Twitter presence. <laughs> yeah. You're really big in social media. You got eighteen thousand Twitter followers. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't believe that. Yeah. I don't know why anybody wouldn't hear from it's the wrestling big. bear. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> no, and because you are currently watching current stuff and people are actually looking for your reviews on that New Japan <laughs> stuff. I don't believe what's going on. Dave Meltzer said something that I was like one of the smartest people and I'm like, what, did everybody die? No. <laughs> That's what, not I That's what I thought. That's what I told Cornette. Dave Meltzer knows what he's talking about. Yeah, but Cornette said something about someone said that to him that all the old fucks, you know, all the old fucks they died or something, so he moved up without even doing anything. I'm like, what happened? Everybody died. <laughs> and there's no one left. That's the only reason why I got it. Well, know? as somebody who follows you on Twitter, <laughs> I actually enjoy when you are actually reviewing, um, you know, your DVR okay. and then and, and you're catching up on your wrestling. Okay. I actually enjoy that very, very much. Okay. Um, so. I know, I do. I don't think you know. I never thought anybody would even care. You know, but I just. For this one. I know, but I didn't. I know. I just didn't <laughs> think. <laughs> Well, it's nice. If, if I can wrap with anything, is there anything that you would like people to know, or is there any advice that you could give to anybody who possibly might be thinking, I might want to be a wrestler, I might be involved, want to be involved? In oh my God! Yeah, all I know is like, I hate it when someone says, "Oh, don't do it," whatever. Yeah. You know what? If if there's anything you want to do, I don't know if it's wrestling or anything. I honestly believe if there is something you really, really want. Mm -hmm. And you know that you can get it, and you can achieve it. And you know, um, I you know I grew up, you know, I mean, I was 17, and I wasn't going to go to college. I didn't know what I was going to do when I grew up. You know, and then my hopes, my parents, the only hope they had for me, my dad kept telling me, "You marry a rich old man with one foot in the grave and another one on banana peel." It works. You know, yeah. and so I never, you know, I had no conception, you know, and plus my parents were married like 66 years and stuff, so I can't have a relationship with 66 days, let alone 66 years, but, um, yeah, there, there was really no hope for me because, um, you know, I have ADHD and some other learning disabilities and stuff, so growing up, there was really no hope for me, so I think I did pretty good <laughs> considering it. There was no really expectations, mm -hmm. but I think... But I really wanted it, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I moved to New York, I thought I wanted to be an actress, you know. And I'm going to go up there and I'm going to be an actress. But, you know, unless the call was after my soaps, I'm not going to go on the interview, you know. And when I lived out in L.A., I was just really kind of nonchalant about it. But if I really, really wanted it, yeah, I would have gone and taken cl acting mm -hmm. classes. And I would have been out there everywhere and busting down, like, you know, like for wrestling, you know, learning my craft and learning and learning. But I think anybody that, you know, if there's anything you want to achieve, if you want to become a doctor or, you know, lawyer or, you know, wrestler, anything, if you really, truly want it, you're going to go out there and you're going to you're gonna do the best you can and you're going to get it. I, and I think it's attainable. Mm -hmm. I, mean, it, I mean, you know, anybody can do anything they want. And I, and I, I look at these, uh, some people and, you know... I mean, maybe I'm very callous or something, but you'll see these people on TV, where are the people helping us? Or, I'm sorry, like, you know, you see these kids, like, feed the children, whatever. I'm like, you know, um, uh, where's their parents, you know? And, um, why, you know, there should, where's their parents taking care of them? Why should I have to do, you know, I got to take care of my own self. You know, and it's like kind of like you can do for yourself. And you can do whatever you want, mm -hmm. and you just have to go out there and do it. Nobody's going to help you. Nobody's going to give you anything, despite you your know. circumstance. Just, yeah, your I mean, despite. I mean, you know, my parents grew up during the depression, and I mean, I had been working since I was fifteen. You know, I started. As a matter of fact, I started working at public supermarket, and you had to be sixteen to be a cashier, mm -hmm. and I was the first female. Um, for public supermarkets to become a bag boy. I was a bag girl at 15. And because my dad knew the manager, and I was like, I want to be a bag, I want to be, a, you know, I want to work here and I want to be a bag girl. We've never had any females. Well, that's wrong. I want to be one. And I ended up being the first bag girl when I was 15. So, 
But, I mean, yeah, if you want anything, you can get there, and you just don't expect anyone to give it to you. you gotta, you got to take it yourself. I think that's great That's advice. what I think. <laughs> in any field, in any form of anything. goal or life dream. Anything, yeah. yeah. I mean, just you know, don't expect anybody to give it to you or anything like that. I mean, you got to work for it and you got to go out and it's your dream. And you do it, you know, and you get there, however way you want to get there. But if you really, really want it, you can get it. I really, honestly believe that. I think it's true. I think it's true, and I think you're proof positive. No. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I think we can end on that note, a high note. <laughs> If you can, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Oh, thank you this for having interview. me. <laughs> this has been actually like a dream interview for me because you are literally one of the innovators of females <laughs> in the wrestling business thank taking you. charge <laughs> and getting it for real. Oh, and thank you. You can brush this aside all you want, <laughs> but if it hadn't been for you taking the role of every role that you have taken, <laughs> there wouldn't be women like us like over here really trying to bust through those doors and make it happen and women's wrestling wouldn't be as big as it is today oh it hadn't thank been you. you oh thank you that's thank so nice you. thank you <laughs> thank you i want to thank everybody at home for joining us and please join us for our next episode of diva diaries don't give up don't give up fight forever Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever.